Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ben Sam, Ben Salem Township Council meeting, Township Council. Uh, today's date, of course, is January 23rd, 2023. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to introduce you to all of the members of council and those up here at the uh, dais this evening. To my extreme left is our township engineer, Phil Worcester. We have uh, Debbie McBreen, our township clerk. And to the extreme right, we have our solicitor, Joseph Paizo. And then we have our council members, Michelle Benitez. And next to her is our vice president, Joe Polari. Next to me, Stacy Champion, and our secretary, Joe Knowles. I'm Ed Kisselback. I'm chairman and president of council. We'd like to begin this meeting by asking everyone to please rise for a moment of silent meditation or prayer. We'll follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda item number two is going to be public comment on any agenda items, items this evening. You have an opportunity later on to uh, comment on, on anything you'd like also in the second uh, public comment session. Agenda item number three is going to be approval of the council minutes. This is for the meeting of January 3rd, 20, uh, 23rd, which was the uh, reorganization meeting. I don't think there's any controversy with that, so I'll ent entertain a motion at this time. Motion to accept it as presented. Second. I have a second on motion. Any additional discussions? Not hearing any. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? Unanimous. Moving on to agenda item number four, which is a minor land development. This is on uh, Ruling and Cook Incorporated, 3250 Oakford Avenue. This is for an office, and it's a light industrial tax map parcel 02-004. Dash three zero seven. Who would be representing uh, this client? Good evening, uh, Heath Dumac, uh, Dumac Engineering, and to my left is uh, Ron from uh, Cook Drilling. Uh, what we have for you this evening is a seven hundred and eighty square foot office addition to their existing uh, office building. Um, if I may, and it's on the screen, the site is approximately 2.5 acres. It has frontage on, um, I apologize, uh, Oakford Avenue. Uh, full view. How the flock do I do that? Up here to the left, top, which is far, edit, oh. save view. Got it. Full view. Look at this. Full screen mode, it's not full view. Okay, better? Okay, should I start over? No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's an existing uh, office building. Uh, it's a renovated farmhouse on the property. Uh, basically where the cursor is, is what we're proposing, which is a 780 square foot uh, addition. Um, associated with this will be a new handicap spot, uh, van accessible. Uh, there will be a, a ADA ramp into the building um, and associated improvements as part of the township engineers and traffic engineers review letters, uh, which I believe we received uh, January 18th. There were a series of variances that were granted on June 2nd. Uh, for impervious surface ratio uh, of 85.83%. That was already an existing nonconformance. Um, and to permit a side yard setback of 8.09 feet. We are asking for 12 waivers. Uh, the majority of them are basically due to such a small addition versus trying to bring the entire site up to speed. If you'd like, we can go over each of the waivers. Please do. Okay. Well, we certainly would. I had 
initially on the subdivision land development, I had more than 12, but on, uh, I guess it would be page five yes. of uh, our letter from TPD. There, then there are just the 12 that you're talking about. That is Request a waiver. So that we'll, we'll, we'll start with that. Okay. See how quick we can get through this, and then I'll let you go through it. And at any, at any point, if any council person would like to interject a question or make a comment, please do at that specific time. Go ahead. Great. Um, item one, section 201-41D9, requiring the plan to show ex all existing features within 400 feet of the site. Uh, the site itself is two and a half acres. We're simply looking to not show all detail within literally a 20 acre swath around the perimeter. Uh, section, or item two, section 201-41-D11A, um, very similar in commentary to the last one, requiring the plan to show existing, all existing easements and utility right of ways within 50 feet. Why is that, if I may ask? There aren't any. For both of them, requested Which? waivers. Um, for a 400 foot around the perimeter, we're talking approximately 20 acres of additional survey, which um, for a 780 square foot addition uh, seems a little out of um, nature for, the, for what we're talking about. If you're asking for a waiver, is there not an alternative to uh, having that uh, Yes, surveyed? we can. if you'd like, we can provide an aerial photo. Well, I think it, if we consider it, that would be at a minimum, I would think. Understood. Do you, is that correct, uh, uh, Yes, for, for this Phil? particular one, we, we, we've done that for uh, uh, other developments as well as far as showing the existing features that are outside the, uh, the impacted area if it's... Uh, if it's a, something like this. So uh, certainly an aerial would be would, would cover what you're looking for in this regard, but otherwise the council uh, has a grant. I know we've done it past, so I'm yeah. not saying that, that, that would suffice for this development, correct? Yes. Okay, and it'll give you all the information that you need. Right, if, they, if they do that, but it, it, it generally goes out really far, pretty far. So uh, I would say for this particular one, if you would like, at least a, at least an aerial is fine. But other than that, it, that this particular one, with re, without regard to, it, I should say for you, it would show all the properties and so forth within that area and the features associated with it. So, again, you know, I'm, I don't know where to go with that as far as the. the it's yes, an aerial is fine, or no. It's I think that I, an aerial is fine for this because we do this elsewhere for the same thing. So. Okay. Yeah, I think we'd be concerned Thank more with the Mr. easements and the utility rights. So that would show that. Is that correct? Yes. Any easements? We can we can actually uh, document any of the easements that are on the property. We've done title work. I don't believe there are any, aside okay. from standard blanket easements for you know, electric, phone, cable. Phil, you concur? Yes. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Uh, item three, section 201-41-D11. G? requiring the plan to show water, sanitary, sewer, storm lines, and all other drainage facilities with size and materials labeled. Um, the site itself, our addition, is literally butting up against and extending from the original uh, office building for Cook. Uh, there are no utilities in the area being disturbed. Um, we felt it better to go for a waiver than to try and map something that um, isn't there. Mr. President, in this particular one, there are, there are drainage facilities associated with the site that it'd be helpful from over our overall perspective with regard to stormwater management within the township to show. So that's one that I think, uh, and, yeah, and some I, of them are on the existing property. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think we would like to know what's on the property, uh, not that you're hiding anything from us, just so we know that we're making the right decision regarding that, there could be a, uh, a uh, secret sewer service that you have that we don't know about. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so for item three, I have no problem uh, mapping comply. out the, the water and sewer for that area. That's fine. And drainage, should that be included? And drainage. And drainage. 
champion was pointing out to us back there that there is a uh, drainage pipe that goes from a drainage ditch under the property throughout the other side. So we like to know. Tax parcel map ending in 303 through through this yard, ending right before 307, where the creek comes out again. Uh, I apologize. Uh, there is a creek that is on this side of the map that kind of goes through. There is a drainage feature there, yes, that is correct, but it's and not then, on his property. Is um, there, does it not go under the property yet on the side that comes over on Oakford itself? I'll be honest. Where there's a driveway? It, it might. Uh, I don't know. So that's why we would need a drainage map. Okay. Just that's so we fine. can say we have, yeah. Also, the issue associated with any drainage that's on that property, like any other property, we'd like to see, because this is the first time we've been in here for a while with this property, how, what the assessment would be of those systems. So whether they're working or functioning or not. Understood. Okay. okay. Correct. Uh, One to four. Uh, requiring a lighting plan to be submitted. I understand the location of that, and uh, I don't think there's too much activity on that property, so explain to me why you wouldn't want to have the appropriate lighting. Um, or did I just do that? To light the entire two and a half acres up, most of that site is, in essence, equipment yard. Um, there are, uh, the majority of Cook's staff are out at job sites with the heavy equipment. Um, normally the equipment between jobs will come back for maintenance service and then get taken out again. Um, if you'd like, we could do a lighting design just for the office parking. I would think so. That would make sense. Okay. And we're fine with that. And what, and what existing lighting's actually there now besides that? If there's any. I think some of that lighting may predate me. I, yeah, well, that's not, <laughs> that's a long, long time ago. It does predate you. <laughs> Back that far. Yep, because um, the Cook family has owned it for generations. Yep. Yeah, your proposal makes sense to me because I don't think you'd want it to have the uh, foot candles that would be associated with a. Especially uh, not during, not adjacent to residences, that's but what the I'm office. Saying. Exactly, uh, yeah. I agree. The only, the I only agree myself, so we'll see what the council okay. decides. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, requiring a, uh, I'm sorry, item five, section 201-43A2F, requiring a utility plan to be submitted. I guess realistically that's going to go away given the fact that we're going to show stormwater, sanitary, and water. So that waiver comes off the table. All right, so that would be a comply there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, item six, uh, section 2012A, uh, to permit preliminary and final plan submission. Well, we may consider this be, this may be a preliminary if we're going to approve it. We don't do too many of those, but we want to make sure we come back with the appropriate information that we're talking about. Would that be correct? correct. All right. So this may be a, a preliminary if the council deems it to be appropriate. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, section item seven, section 201-104-B1, requiring curbing along the frontage of Oakford Avenue. Um, that driveway and our frontage on Oakford is not uh, utilized at this point. It's been fenced off and gated. Is there any curbs and sidewalks in that area, though? There aren't any. Um, no. Thank you. Right, right now. No. Uh, but uh, as normal, we would request the feet move up for that. So if at some point, Township wanted to do something there, we'd have the money to do it. And your client would be uh, okay with that? So if we. So if we grant a waiver, there would be a fee in lieu of the curbs and sidewalks being placed in there? I think he would be okay with that. Yeah. I think it is. I think so. Just a waiver. Yeah, sidewalks and later waiver. That's cool. It's just Yeah, you can't see Yep. Okay. All right. All right, let me interrupt you for a second. I've just been informed that uh, we have one of our uh, residents are trying to uh, view the council meeting, and they cannot. It's blurry and fuzzy. Your photographs are fine. So, Darren, can we come out here? Can you come out here, Darren, in the back room? If you don't mind me inter interrupting this. Um, it could be recorded improperly. It could be just a, a glitch in something else, but I was just informed that that may be the case. So, if Darren, if you can hear me, maybe that's why it's blurry and fuzzy. <laughs> Actually, if you'd like, what I could do is uh, 
zoom in a little further on the image. No? Okay. He's coming right now. <clears throat> okay, you can make, tell him what's happening, Joe. Internet feed is fine, Verizon is fine, Comcast is messed up again. Comcast is, okay. Yes, uh, I can't fix that. I fixed it last week and called them, and now it's back. Okay, so it's Comcast. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell them to watch online. So it's not you sleeping in the back, right? <laughs> no, that's what it is. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Always have the answers. Good man. Thank you. All right. So that's what it is. Um, Can you I imagine if he did it at the football game last week, weekend, what that would be like? I'm sorry? Can you imagine if that happened during the football game last week? A couple days ago. You have a lot of people no, no longer on uh, Comcast. Comcast wouldn't have missed mm -hmm. that. It's commercials and money. Believe me, it'll work. All right. Go ahead, sir. All right. Uh, We're on I'm, that. Item 8 would be the next one. Um, section 201-106-A2-A6, prohibiting grading within three feet of any site property line. Um, in this instance, and I apologize, the grading uh, is occurring basically between Cook and Cook. The next door neighbor is also owned by Cook. Any relation? <laughs> okay, we're fine with that. All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> item 9, sorry, section 201-109, requiring plans to show all easements and underground utilities. Um, going back to item three, showing water, sanitary, storm lines, and uh, drainage facilities. So that's who will comply. Right, correct. Section 10, or item 10, section 201-111A, requiring sidewalk along the frontage of Oakford. We're asking for a waiver of that. Sidewalks in frontage of uh, uh, right, okay. Uh -huh. Same thing. Either sidewalks and the curbs, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, correct. Uh, section uh, 11, Section 201.112.0, uh, requiring a lighting plan to be submitted with isolumen footprints. Um, as long as we're doing it just for the office parking area, we're fine with that. And trying to figure out what the lights are elsewhere on the property. Uh, last item, section 12, require, uh, section 201-114, requiring outdoor collection stations to be provided, screened, and landscaped when indoor collection is not provided. Um, we're doing indoor collection. So realistically, I believe the waiver does go away, but we don't need a dumpster pad and, and dumpster uh, for the office. But after you collect it indoors, where does it go? There's a uh, large warehouse shop that's right behind, and I apologize. Okay, so you keep it inside the warehouse is what you're saying? Correct. Okay, you have an area in there. Mm -hmm. All right, I understand. So, so all your trash is picked up from, all your trash internal. is picked up from the existing big building? Yes. So a dump truck pulls up and they put uh, it in? Tr uh, or not, a trash, trash truck. truck? yes. Trash truck, sorry. That is Barbara correct. Truck. So no trash is held outside? Can you go back to number 11 again? Certainly. Oh, uh, requiring a lighting plan be submitted with isolumen footprints. Um, what I suggested was doing that specifically for the uh, proposed office parking area and not the entire site. Okay, and that's similar to what we had earlier. Okay. We will try our best to figure out what's out there, but Literally, some of those lights are older than me. Okay, it wasn't too bad, was it? So far, no. Okay, let me back up and go, uh, if I may. And uh, uh, one description says 2.43, the other says 2.49 or something like that, so I don't know how. That's not a major difference. Two descriptions somewhere. All right, if we go back to uh, TPD, and we have the, um, the first page. Uh, we have the second page, which is the subdivision, what we just basically went over. Everything else, um, uh, if there's anything else we let out on this page five, then everything else will be in compliance on your part. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, and your presentation is uh, completed it's at this at point? This, at this point it is. Uh, with the only caveat, this was submitted as a minor land development. Um, I don't know whether the 
preliminary as final designation really applies to it. Um, we would obviously like full approval this evening with the condition that we will work out the remaining items with your township engineer. I'll ask Phil on that. Well, what would you say? Well, I would prefer a preliminary. We do that during, after approval, we do it for the final plan approval and recording and so forth. So th that would be acceptable, I, I believe, as long as, as long as, unless council wants to see it. And if you want to see it again, then, then you know, that when you originally said to just have preliminary come back for final, then they'd have to come back. Uh, but otherwise, I think laying out these, these, these waivers and reducing them or eliminating some or the local applies to them help us greatly. So I think we could probably move forward with these. We also have a couple traffic comments that they still have to address. Okay, we didn't get that far, but uh, I know my preference, but I'm going to let the council make that decision when the, when the motion is put on the floor, okay? All right, let's go continue. When we go uh, continue the um, onslaught of uh, paperwork here, we have the Bucks County Planning Commission. Uh, and they have made a comment also similar to what we've just agreed to, mm -hmm. so I'm going to just pass through that. We have our fire uh, rescue department, and um, basically the, uh, it says that you would be in compliance with, with our regulations, and then... Um, Traffic safety review land development, and um, that's from our police department. And the same thing, we cannot foresee any traffic issues. And then we have our traffic engineer, and uh, I guess there talks onions. I'm looking for the. Uh, there will be a um, impact fee also on the building of the of the building. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. I don't think it'll be that much, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's a small, like I said, yeah, it's I'm a small Yeah, I'm not going to guess what it was going to be, but there will definitely be an a impact fee. And then on the, uh, the traffic planning and design incorporated from, from their company, um, uh, I don't see anything that's warrant uh, having a uh, uh, preliminary or final being denied. Is that correct? Is that what you have on it? They're putting bollards in to protect the people from going into the building. Our, their cars, and the other one is uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we have an ADA accessibility. Uh, mm -hmm. and you're uh, complying with those. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Okay. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your your pleasure at this time. You have any questions? Mr. Is, there, is can I ask Mr. Paizo a question? Sure. Okay. If we if we were to make this a preliminary and final with the restrictions that it has to come back to township engineer and you for review before they could move forward, that's something that we could do if we wanted to, too, right? They couldn't do it unless it, it was approved by you guys. Otherwise, it would come back in front of us, right? That's correct. Um, one question for Mr. <clears throat> Dumac. You, uh, I was provided with the proofs of mailing of the uh, notice. Those appear to be in order. I didn't get a copy of the notice, if I could have a copy of that as well. Uh, if you don't have it with me, if you could <coughs> provide it to me. Understood. I can get it to you tomorrow morning. Thank you. We just need that for the file. Mm -hmm. All right, do we have uh, any other questions from the council at this time? Would anyone like to come forward and comment on this uh, land development, minor in nature? Uh, so I'll ask for the pleasure of your uh, decision at this time, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, I would to make a motion for Ruan and Cook Incorporated, 3250 Oakford Avenue, 02-004-307, <clears throat> that we have condition, we have um, preliminary and final with the caveat that it has to be approved by the township engineer and the township solicitor that everything you said you were going to do, you're yeah. going to do. You'll, you'll pay um, for curbs and sidewalks for in lieu of, and you'll also pay the, uh, the uh, impact fee also. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Can I bring that in a little bit more specific, Absolutely. if I may? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, John. Mm -hmm. All right, so then on, on, uh, on page five on the letter, we have, uh, we're going to grant a waiver for one and two, and have a, an aerial, uh, mm -hmm. okay, photo. Right, okay, so I'm gonna have that. 
Uh, you're going to comply with three. You will also grant a waiver uh, on four, and that's going to be uh, an exception to that. It's going to be on the office area. Mm -hmm. You're going to uh, specifically address that area when it comes to the lighting. We're going to grant a, um, a, a waiver on six, mm -hmm. five, uh, you're going to comply to, six, you, uh, which is a waiver, seven, you're going to pay a lieu and fee of, and that's for the requiring the curbings along Oakford, eight's the waiver, of course, with prohibiting grading of three foot. Mm -hmm. uh, number nine is going to be, uh, you're going to comply with that. That's showing the easements underground. Uh, that goes along with uh, the aerial and the additional things we're doing there. C9, you're going to comply with that. Uh, excuse me, it's nine. I put C for mm -hmm. complying with it. Uh, number 10, well, you're going to ask, we're going to grant you a waiver on the sidewalks along the frontage of Oakford. Uh, 11 is a waiver. And again, you're going to address the office area only when it comes to uh, for that lighting. And then 12 is we're going to grant a waiver. Is that what you have? That's what I have, sir. Joseph? Right. Right. Yes. yes. Seven and ten. Seven, yeah, we have a fee. And what was the other one? Ten. Ten, correct. Those are the traffic items we have in the Yes. And all other items in the TPD letter of January 18 are will comply items. Um, anything that wasn't specifically outlined by uh, Mr. Kisselbeck in his motion. And well, my, my motion. And um, Mr. Polari's motion as yeah. clarified by Mr. Uh, Kisselbeck. And the January 18 traffic review letter is also will comply. Correct? All right, so we have a motion on the floor. We have a second? I'll second the motion. Second on the motion. Any additional discussion? Not hearing a. Those in favor signify with an aye. 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 All right. So we have a nay. And we have, so we have a four to one. No abstentions. Okay. All right. That's the, uh, that's the motion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Agenda number five. This is a minor land development for BCME property, ma property management. Um, and this is by LLC, care of Edward Rogers. 4851 Street Road. This is Honest Real Estate is the name of the company. And this is a business professional area district. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good luck. 02004, 184-001. And we have someone uh, representing and your we do, sir. Is? My name's Keith Marshall. I'm a engineer with CMC Engineering. Uh, I'm here with Ed Rogers, who is the owner of the property and who runs Honest Real Estate. Okay. So I can run through the uh, the, the project uh, the, in the in the proposal. Um, it's an existing. Uh, it was a single family residence at one time. It sat fallow for uh, many years. Several uh, people have looked at, at redeveloping it. Redeveloping it. Uh, Mr. Rogers has been, he's owned it for about a year and a half now, I think. Uh, when he bought it, he worked at the township uh, to clean the property up. There was some, it, you know, uh, the, the windows were broken and, and there were trees that were falling down and things like that. So he worked to clean the property up uh, at, at the beginning before we even started. So, uh, since our involvement, uh, we, uh, we you know, surveyed the property. Uh, we took the project through the zoning hearing board uh, back in last March uh, to receive uh, the five variances that re were required. We did appear before the planning commission uh, in June and uh, got a recommendation from them for prelim final approval. Uh, so essentially, uh, what uh, is proposed is to renovate the, ex the existing uh, uh, house into a, an office for uh, the real estate business that Mr. Rogers uh, runs. Uh, in addition to that, we he proposes to uh, to 
add a one-story 722 square foot addition in the back, um, and that's where you see that's what this is back in this. That's what that indicates there. As part of the proposal, uh, we would have an entrance in off of Street Road on the eastern side of the property. It would loop around uh, to a parking lot in the rear and then exit on the western side of the property back onto um, Street Road. Uh, the, the property's unique, and, and that'll get into some of the very, or the, no, excuse me, the um, waivers that we're requesting. It is a very narrow property, narrow and long, uh, so that kind of drives the, uh, the design of, of of the parking and dry aisles in and out, which is, you know, creates a unique situation in, in which we're, uh, the waivers that we're requesting. Uh, I believe that we've uh, complied or will comply with all the comments from TPD. Uh, we've uh, had several, several conversations with them back and forth. I believe that they support the waivers that we're requesting as well. Uh, I can run through those. Uh, I don't know if you, if, if you have any specific questions about the project or if you want me to jump right into the waivers. We can get to right to the waivers. Okay. So uh, we had requested uh, eight waivers on our plan. There is nine waivers in the TPD letter, only because the one one of our waivers kind of got broken into two parts. It, it relates to this uh, generally the same thing. It's the same requirement, but I'll, I can review that. Why don't we go through all of them? That's not that many difference between the waivers and, and what's presented on sure. the subdivision ordinance. So we'll go with number one. Yes. Yeah, so, street design uh, standards. You're asking for a waiver, is that correct? I'm sorry, are you, are you going through number, the existing features plan? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Um, oh, he, there's, the waivers are listed on page five, if it makes it easier, in, in TPD's uh, 118 letter. Yeah. Yeah. I do see that. And uh, we could just do that. Okay. That'd be fine. So, um, number one, section 201.41D, to not require the full existing features survey of 100 uh, um, feet in all directions. We did submit an uh, aerial context plan uh, in, in lieu of uh, providing a full survey of 100 feet in all directions. Uh, as you can imagine, it's a, it's, it's a unique long property, and uh, you know, getting on, on people's, people's residential and, and properties and things like that. That's why we, uh, we did the uh, uh, aerial context plan. Number two, 201-41F, to not require formal wetland certification. As I mentioned, the property uh, is really manicured. It, it, was, it was in disrepair, but it's really manicured lawn. Uh, there, there are no wetlands on the site, uh, so we didn't uh, feel it necessary to provide a, that full certification by a, uh, by a wetlands consultant. Section uh, number three is section 201-104-B1 to not require sidewalk, sidewalk along street road uh, and no curb sidewalk or additional right-of-way cartway, cartway along uh, Lying Avenue. Uh, there is no sidewalk in the area uh, on either street, uh, so that's what, that was the, the impetus for that request from sidewalk. And then, of course, on Lang Avenue, um, we've heard from the township that they don't want to expand that uh, that right of way, they want to keep it in that in that uh, in that configuration. However, we have provided our setbacks to uh, if for some reason that down the road additional right of way would be required. So we would be compliant with that if for some reason the township would want right of way back there. There is uh, no traffic coming on and off onto Lying Avenue, however. Correct, and that's actually one of the reasons, another reason why we've requested the variances and waivers that we needed because of the unique property. We wanted to keep all the traffic off of Lang Avenue and, and really everybody accesses from street road, accesses and egresses from street road. So there is no traffic uh, that would be on Lang Road by, be, because of this development. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and number Sorry. three and four is where- Before we oh, move on, Phil, I, I'm just a little confused. The plan seems to show 25 foot of additional right of way on Lang, uh, or does it not? Um, so we we were we were excuse me we were requested to show the future right of way, but it's not being offered for dedication at this point. So that's why we uh, we asked for that waiver. 
and it shouldn't be shown at all because otherwise it gives you the option of being able to do that later, even though you ask for a waiver well, now. Why, why wouldn't we want the right-of-way dedicated even if there are no future plans to do anything? We'd still, if in the future somebody wants to do something, then we have to go and obtain the right-of-way. Why wouldn't we just get it now? Well, uh, we, we certainly could. It's just that we don't see the need to own property there. So we've never allowed anybody to have access to the back end out there. They had to stay on street road for any other properties. Why would we even so give them the opportunity to have that down the road? That we're trying to protect the Trevos area back there, and there's all kinds of water problems and drainage problems. I believe with the wetlands, they should have to show what's there and show us that there's no wetland problems because there's a ton of water, water runoff into the, the Trevos area back there, Lang Avenue and so forth. I agree. I have one question when you're talking about the right of way and the dedication. Um, the properties next to it, has that been dedicated on the other side where they're talking about? I don't believe it has. A, uh, there was a development that was done to the west of us, uh, I would say recently within the last four or five years, and I don't believe that they provided the right of way. Um, the, the, the line that's just shown on our property just extends to show what that 25 feet would look like. You're talking 4753 right next door. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Yeah, they weren't allowed to ha even show anything going out to, right. to Lang Avenue, and you guys shouldn't. Uh, we didn't allow any of the other businesses there to do that because it just opens up mm -hmm. a can of worms of coming in later and saying, hey, we got this. It it's, was approved. We just asked for a waiver. We want to come in now and not have that waiver. Why even go to that? Let's just... No, okay, so I, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe I confused it. The the, the 25 foot right of way would be to the benefit of the township. The, we're, we're we're not proposing. Well, I guess my quite my my point is, the the township didn't. We were directed by the township consultants that they didn't want that right of way. That the township shouldn't shouldn't need that right of way. So in order for our plan to be compliant and us not showing that right of way, that would essentially allow the expansion of Lang Avenue. Uh, so we, we requested the waiver from providing the 20, from dedicating that 25 foot right of way. In no way are we suggesting that we wanna come back and, and make a connection to Lang Avenue. Uh, and even if we provided that right of way, I don't think that that would, pre would prevent it from, from, from happening. We just, we would never wanna do that. So then we're not going to do it. Is that correct, well, Mr. Engineer? Well, my recollection, again, I, I apologize if I'm incorrect in this, we, we don't need the right-of-way. The surrounding properties don't have that right-of-way. It's an old designation regarding a 50-foot right-of-way for that section. So we didn't see the need to have it. Certainly, if, if you think it's important for us to get or at, at all, or it could be offered for dedication in the future. And well, I don't, we could, don't, do you think we have to do anything with it? Yeah. I don't, neither do I. What's that? I said I don't think it needs to be part of the proposal. I, 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 what do you think, Joe? You're, are you from the same school or from a different school? Based on all the comments I've heard, I would just proceed as the letter suggests, that you'll waive the requirement that they give you the 25-foot right-of-way. Yep, yeah, that, that's... Go with that, Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, my question is, I have a question real quick. On, on the back, I'm glad... You have that type of buffer from the... Uh, parking to the back, mm -hmm. which is 75 feet, okay, uh, is there any drainage or anything there, or we know that that's not wetlands, you're saying it's a lawn, I mean. Yeah, space. that's actually, thank you for bringing that up. That's one thing that I did not talk about. Uh, we are putting a rain guard in that back area to manage the stormwater uh, from the, the proposed improvements, uh, so it actually will help slow down the water that is coming down through that area. So that is a rain garden. Uh, we meet the requirements of reducing the flows and the, um, and the, and the volume out of that. And so um, I, I apologize for not pointing that out. Okay, that's a, I thought there was something there. Okay. I don't think you got there yet. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that dark green area that you see would be right. the rain garden. Yep. I thought it was something. Well, I thought it was a little uh, basin. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I thought, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I tell you it's a couple of fish, and I bet you the kids will be using it. Rain guard. Uh, so number four just relates to that 50-foot right-of-way we were just talking about in TPD's letter. Uh, that was number 
uh, three on our plan, just so you can see that number three and four in TPD's letter was combined into three on ours. Uh, number five, section 201-1062, to permit grading within three feet of the property line. As I mentioned, uh, with, the unique, uh, with the unique, how narrow it is in the existing building, uh, we do need to grade within uh, three feet of the property line. Uh, could, so we're, before we go on, it, it three, the wave of the sidewalks and curbs, uh, oh, I'm sorry. where needed, <laughs> uh, you, you are willing to uh, pay a fee in lieu yeah, of that? Yeah. Okay. I hadn't heard that. So okay, your thank you. parking lot going to be a huge parking lot on each side of the building. There's not a ton of space between 4753 and your property. How close are you going to be to their property line? We're, uh, so there, there's about two feet on either side of the, where, the, where the driveway comes through. They are both commercial in use, yeah. What yep. kind of buffer do you have between the two properties? Uh, the, so along, and actually that um, was one of the variances that we had, we had received. Uh, there, where the parking is, we're providing the three foot uh, buffer per the zoning variance that we received. So that will be buffered because the parking actually has more of a buffer uh, between it. But in order to provide the uh, required width uh, for the entrance drives in and out, uh, we're about two feet on either side to the property line. Now, I have a question about that too. Is the, there's only one, there's no, it doesn't look like there's any driveway there now, but from the picture, unless I had a old Google picture, but uh, there's a cut at one, but there's not even a cut on the other one. Correct. So now you're going to have go from no driveway entrance there, there should have been at least one. And then now you're gonna have two. Is PennDOT okay with that? So we're working through the PennDOT permit now. Uh, I don't, we don't foresee any issue with that. There is an existing curb cut on the western side. Right. And when we did the survey, you can actually, you know, you can see that there, it, there was some sort of driveway there yeah, at some time, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, we will be adding the second, the second okay, cut. Okay, and, and the, the, my, uh, just to go on the same point, so one's in and one's out. So that's Correct. why you think you're going to get PennDOT approval because one's in and one's out? Correct. Right. Okay. And then also that lane is going to be a one-car lane going in and a one-car lane going out, right? Correct. Right. Okay. So you can't park on that lane. Correct. So the only parking is going to be 10 or 12 spots in the back? Yeah. We actually, the, there's 11, uh, 11 spaces total. Yeah, t there's 10 plus the handicap space, uh, which complies with the zoning uh, requirements for parking for the building of this size and use. Yeah, and how many employees do you expect that? I, I mean, with a parkage. it says brokers, but you mean licensed agents, I guess it says. We're, we're yeah, typically so a remote company. So okay, that's what I thought. You do so mostly internet. Location now. Now. So we have about 75 agents with our company now, and the space that we're in now has but none of them come in the office, you're saying? We're all remote. All our systems are, they can work from, from Florida if they'd like and never come to, to our actual company. So what's this going to be used for then? It's going to be our main headquarters. So right now we rent a space in Philadelphia. And how many people do you employ in that space uh, that come into so, the office? So we have about 75 licensed agents. No, but how many come into the office? Like on an average day, I'd say nine. Because we, we have nine desks right now. And that's that's what we can. That's okay. What we now, it, it, I guess you would have settlements at a title company that you Correct. would maybe have a settlement here, right? Correct. Title company we utilize is right at Bustleton and Street Road, which is right down the street from this location. So we currently go there for settlements, and we have no intentions of bringing it bringing it here. Should it be since you're not putting any uh, uh, buffer shrubbery and and such where, where, the, where your parking area is? Should you not consider having at least a privacy fence? Along? So that green strip that you see around the parking is actually uh, a buffer, the buffer plantings. So we are providing uh, a buffer between for where the where the uh, parking area is, the actual ten spaces in the back of the property. There's a there's a green planting strip that you can see coming coming around here. That's our parking uh, area planting screen. So there is a buffer. On that, on that section, yes. Where I'm speaking of where there isn't a buffer is where the actual dry valves that come out to the road are. I understand. All right, we'll come, we'll come back to that in a minute when you get to that point as far as the driveways. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, so that was, one of, that was number five. Number six is to permit double frontage uh, lots. So 
we're asking for a waiver. Obviously, it's, a, it's an existing nonconformity, but to be uh, with abundance of caution, we asked for that waiver. Um, there's another uh, comment about sidewalk from section 20111. As we mentioned before, we were requesting a waiver from providing sidewalk on either road. Number eight, section 20112D uh, is to permit the planning strip parallel to BMP and the proposed parking to be three feet. So that has to be actually be five feet. Uh, we're requesting a waiver on that to be three feet because of just because of the logistics of the property. And then uh, section 20112 is to permit parking areas within 15 feet of, uh, of property lines. And so, as I mentioned before, uh, with, the unique, with the unique characteristic of the property, uh, we need that waiver just to, get our, just to get proper movements through it. We did meet uh, at, at, at the behest of the Planning Commission with the fire marshal on site to review his issues. Uh, you'll see in the packet that he has provided an updated letter that, that we are complying with all of his issues. Um, so I think that's important to note as well. Uh, we, uh, and, and I, as I mentioned, we had received the variances that are required in order to, uh, to, to, to build this uh, proposal. So those are the uh, very, or the, excuse me, the waivers that we are requesting. Okay, so I have a question. Um, sure. On the plan itself, um, number six, to permit the minim minimum radius of the access road entrance to be less than the minim minimum radius of 20 feet, which I, I understand, but my one question is when you actually do this, are they gonna be hard curbs or are you gonna have them like soft at the end? Because I know some of the businesses here, are two down is, my children's um, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in terms of having that a, um, like a straight edge rather than having a soft thing where you're running over the uh, grass or whatever may be there. Yeah, we can certainly work with, uh, with the engineer on, on if, the, if the they have a recommendation for that. Yes. All right, the uh, 17 foot width of your entrance and exit. Oh, 17 foot. Did I say 15? 17 it's 17, foot. yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you not make that wider? Uh, I'll that tell you was... why. If you're, you're, you're flying down Street Road, I mean, it's not like a little country road you're coming down. You're moving pretty well. <laughs> sure. And to make that turn that quick on that narrow of an entrance seems to be it's daunting. That has that uh, third lane there in front of us, too. Right. So uh, I, we're working through PennDOT with that, and I can certainly, if they will accept a, a, a wider throat there, we can certainly uh, entertain that. Yeah, I would like to, I mean, at a minimum, I would think it should be 18 foot. That's just a foot. We, and you have the space to do it, actually, to come out. We also want to be careful about how, how why we make them, because they are uh, one way. And for instance, I wouldn't want to make the one on the western side a lot wider. Uh, that might, somebody might see that and, and, and promote coming in the wrong direction. So mm -hmm. we, we, there's kind of a, a, a balancing act there. Um, so maybe we can look at making the entrance a little wider since you would be making that swing in that way, but leaving that en exit uh, maybe maybe the 17 feet. To your point then, couldn't you make it, and I know you have to work with PennDOT on this, but encouraging people to turn in right on that east side and then encouraging them with the pathway of the drive to turn right outward onto Street Road? They have to turn. They, so they, yeah, they so... Uh, this is right at the start of the of the island, so they would have to make. Uh, I believe they would have to make a right out of it. And the, and you the other, see what I mean, though, with cutting the the edge, you know, so that you're you're curving that drive outward to the right, so that when you have people coming down Street Road, you're not. They're going to see clearly that's an exit. We'll have to not look, somewhere they should be entering. And we'll have but, to look and see if we can make um, make the make that because you. you I, I understand your point. We would have to kind of bring it around, yes. so it might be a difficult movement to actually swing because it would be an S an S S curve there. Mm -hmm. But we'll look at it. We'll certainly see what we can do. And, uh, and on that as well, because there's no room out. And and uh, you know we even had trouble getting we had to have them put fire truck uh, uh, templates on this thing to make sure you could get a truck back there, and it was tight. So it's just a. Nasty tight lot, so we can work with. We'll definitely work with PennDOT and, because those are all good concerns. The one, one should be a, a right out only because again, you can't make the left without That's going over the, the median. On the, on the left side, looking at that. But uh, so we were trying. I think I thought we were trying to get a, a small radius on those corners. 
Uh, yeah, um, we, we'll, and we'll certainly work with what, but, with what uh, we can do there, yeah. So, so to your point, at the back of the building, if the truck does have to come in, can it get around? Is there, does that have to get made larger so they can make their turn? No, they can make, they yeah, can we, make it we, in the back. And they can come along well, the west side. I guess if they're approved, they can get through the west side. Is that, or, or just hope that the building's not burning on that side? So we, I had that conversation uh, with the fire marshal standing. You know, we, st we stood out there and looked at it and looked at all the issues. And he made the comment to me that they would pull in regardless of where the fire is. Yeah. So, okay. I, yeah. And we, and we did show and, and uh, we, we provided the, the, the turning radius for the truck that he requested us to use there. <clears throat> And in terms of your point, is there a way that you can put giant entrance and exit signs up like the high school has? So we, we will be required to, to uh, put one-way signs uh, at People both entrances them. plus a do not enter on the eastern side, on the eastern exit. So you wouldn't be able to, you know, obviously enter there. How many... And, I'm sorry, not to cut you in, but that is shown uh, on the plan. Okay. I think there are some additional so, details that, yes. that, that, that the engineer wanted on that, but which we'll obviously comply with. How many clients do you expect to uh, entertain in a day's time at work? Actual clients? People uh, coming in and out of there, yes. Other than your normal people will be there. We'll <clears> understand <throat> the situation and we'll, we'll, we'll make their way accordingly. I'm trying to gauge like the last few weeks at our current office. Like today, I was there all day. Not one client showed up because um, most appointments are done, you know, over the phone through text message um, or just on the road. I think, um, especially from my experience, ten years ago, all clients came to the office, but now everything is remote. Most people don't even want to meet the real estate agent. They they just do it on a phone call through text message and get started. It sounds crazy, but... Well, I, I, I do that for a living, so yeah. I'm a REMAX agent, but whatever. So you, so you understand how many people... Yeah, but I, uh, that's all right. No, I, we I, don't I, want to meet him. I understand I'm actually, what you're saying. <laughs> I, I, I actually did a deal with your office. That's fine, you know, but... Uh, I do understand this. It was actually uh, no relation, but it was Joe DiGirolamo uh, uh, from Honest Real Estate. Yeah. But uh, I called the mayor to make sure it wasn't him, but it was somebody. It was apparently you have another Joe D. Drama. Okay, go ahead, Joe. But you have no clients coming to the offices? So Ms. I don't want to say no, but, but on a daily basis, there's not clients in and out. Um, very from, minimal. From the answer is very minimal. Very minimal. Okay, yeah. Joe? Yeah, I, I do understand what you're doing for your business, but two or three years down the road, you sell that to another business. We now have minimal parking for your, what was good for your business that may not be bus be good for the next business. So, I mean, you, you got businesses all around you that are gonna have a lot more parking than you're gonna have there. Um, you need to have parking enough for the size of that building for, not just for your business, for if you decide you're a real estate guy, you know, you sell commercial real estate to somebody else, they come in and they have 25 or 30 employees and there's no, no parking. I think we have to look at that realistically right now with us approving this development. That's just, that's just my opinion. Good point. And we do comply with the size building. We do comply with the township's ordinance on the number of parking spaces required. We, we weren't requesting a waiver or variance from that specific item. Including the addition? And Including what's the, the addition? addition? The addition is additional office space. Correct, right. So, we, so the existing building uh, is approximately 1,500 square feet. We're adding the approximate uh, 722, which uh, ends up being 20, about 2,200 square feet, and we're required 11 spaces for that. Now, your basin you have in the back there, or in the top part of it, I guess it's green, mm -hmm. the, that's based on what calculation? So we uh, ran stormwater calculations based on what's existing and what we're proposing with impervious surfaces, and we sized it accordingly to comply with the township ordinance to reduce, uh, to reduce the flows pre to post. Okay, good, and is that, if that were be, to be moved closer to Lang Avenue, would that cause a problem? We were trying to keep it as far away from Lang Avenue uh, just to be able to provide additional buffer there. So that's well, why we have it pulled up into the site. Well, what I'm, what I'm, I'm getting to is a point that Mr. Polari was making. If in the future something would change, if that basin were moved back initially, which is right now, um, you would still have buffer, regardless of that being a basin or not be a basin, because it's still buffer, mm -hmm. period. So if that were moved closer to Lang Avenue, it wouldn't cause anybody any problems whatsoever, and it would give you the ability to expand the parking uh, quite easily. 
Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't foresee an issue with, with moving it. Does that make sense to you, Jim? It does. The driveway, if you have the, the U driveway, on the one side is 4753, the, that's the, um, the uh, tax guys off building there. Um, so your driveway will be right next to their driveway. Coming, is that going in or coming out? So if you're facing- uh, I'm now, facing building your building. Here, the building to the right, where we just signed a lease for a Liberty Tax. I actually represented the owner on that building, so a Liberty Tax is going to go in there. Um, and then to the left is a, he's a commercial structural engineer, I believe, that he works out of there. So that same gentleman owns both of those properties. Um, I got off track with your, with your question there. So nobody along there has two, a driveway in and a driveway out, no. and it's hard to get out of those properties to begin with. You're making one to come around. Is that parking lot next to the other one where people go in and out of too? It's already hard enough to get out of there making a left or a right. It doesn't matter because it's just a tough area. I think, I think all of those buildings along that little stretch right there, even from Margiotti and Kroll down to the vet, they're all difficult to get out of there parking. I have a parking lot there. I think Mr. Mr. Clary, if you are coming out, like you're coming out, and there's an asphalt driveway right four feet next to you, you could have someone coming out of the business next door to make a right and someone coming out of your business to make a right at the same time, is the, is, I think, is the, could be a problem. Well, the, uh, what That's I will up say, to PennDOT, I guess, too, but I mean. Yeah. What I will say to that, to, to lay fears, I mean, th there is, it, there's, they're visible. It's, vis you know, you're right next to each other, so you would be, it would be a visible a visible situation. So 4839, so it's Margiotti and Kroll, then who you're renting to the tax service, or you rented for the other. Um, that has two drives, though, does it not? Because it has a shared drive with Margiotti and Kroll, in a sense, because they do have parking on the one side. So they have their, their I believe, their handicapped parking spot is on that side, which essentially acts as their driveway. So if you... If, the, if they come around, so they come in on the west side of the 4839, and then they come around the back, they actually use Margiotti and Kroll's um, driveway to come out. So I don't think it's a shared driveway. I think they just use Margiotti and Kroll's driveway. It's kind of paved, kind of shared. It's kind of what it seems to be going in there. Um, so the parking on the 4839 side for the asphalt, the driveway, there's no parking on that driveway. And then, so, okay. Along the, uh, you're, you're, I'm sorry. Are no, I'm you fine. I'm thinking out loud. Oh, okay. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Are there other, any other questions? Phil, you want to add something? Yeah, I, I do. I, I want to. I want to clarify something with regard to this this rear right of way issue. Rear right of way the, issue. Where we have a 25 foot right of way, and our ultimate right of way is 50 feet. And I want to. I, and I kind of got lost in translation here. Are we, do we want that right of way? Or is that, a way, are we granting that waiver? My point is that we could accept the right of way or we could have it offered for dedication or it can be just few, just all regular ultimate right of way. Um, so, you know, we, we originally would set, said in our letter an easement for that uh, right-of-way easement within there, which is generally the offer of dedication for roadway work or uh, drainage work or anything else that might go in there in the roadway. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understood where we were going. I think in my own mind I wasn't quite sure with regard to the ultimate right-of-way versus the amount being dedicated. So you're saying, so in case we, we needed it later, that, that wouldn't give them the right to use it, right? It would just give us the right later to use it. But, but have my, right my to question it. is the terminology that we would use. And to me, this is the first, normally our right of, our future, our ultimate right of way is what we base our setbacks and everything else on. This type, and they've done that. But we, we don't always get dedication for that. We have it offered for dedication. In, in the past where if we ever needed it, it's a note on the plans or we could come back and get it. Yeah, we don't. But otherwise, 
the applicant has to maintain it regardless. So, um, you know, so my understanding was that the, uh, that the areas on each side are 25 foot right of ways. The chances of us building a 25 more feet of road is unlikely, but it may be likely, as Mr. Pleary pointed out, that we might have drainage issues. We have a pipe, they have a pipe going through it right now. So I'd be curious just for, uh, I'm sorry to belabor it, but it may be a small conversation associated with that. And I'd be interested in Mr. Paizo's yes. uh, opinion regarding that. And my, my other question with that would be. Thanks, Jeff. Does that, does that affect Mr. Kisselback's idea that uh, we could push the drainage back? Would, we, would We'd be unable to push the drainage back if we had it right away in the way. Well, if we push the drainage, we could. If we own the property, there's a, if there's a rain guard. We could push it well, back. Well, they then, have they have drainage there now. So if they wanted to make that parking, they would have to accommodate that drainage within the right of way. Okay. It could be within the future, uh, the uh, the ultimate right of way, or the up to the twenty, the start of the twenty-five foot roadway right of way. Okay. And we also, you know, again, we're recommending fee in lieu of curb and sidewalk for back there. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything, but that's, so we're also doing that. So it's just kind of an, it's an, it's an interesting area. We don't have, we have double, we have rear frontage, frontage on both sides, which is, you know, the access to two streets, it's kind of awkward. So, um, but they wouldn't be able to use it for access because they have to go over a rain garden, right? I mean, and plus it doesn't give them a right to just because. Well, no, they have, there's not going to be a road there. We have a drainage facility there. It's on right. a land development plan, so they're not going to have a road going through there. Right, okay. Uh, but so I, I don't think, it, but I guess you could come back and say we're going to go underground with an underground basin, get a variance for. for uh, yeah, they'd have to come. Per reason, they'd have yeah. to come back to through the process to do something like that and take access to land. That could happen. Regardless of the right of way, yeah, they couldn't do it without us, though. Without right, right, right. 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 I just don't know how to handle this particular. Show you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 he's keeping quiet on this one. Well, I mean, it's, it's well, not... well, well, well. <laughs> you finally need. Me. You really do need. Me. That's what Joe's saying right now. I. It, since the initial discussion on the. the future right-of-way at the rear of the property. Um, you've had a discussion on parking and Mr. Kisselbeck's suggestion that perhaps, since you weren't taking additional right-of-way, that the stormwater facilities could be moved closer to the rear property line and the parking area expanded by probably four parking spaces by my rough calculations on here. Um, so, to some extent, I guess the que there are two questions that come from that. One is, is the, if you will, sliding of the stormwater management area and the outlet piping feasible? Is that something that works based on the way that that is designed? Can the, everything just literally be pushed back, say, 15 feet yeah, I don't, or, or, or 20 feet. Yeah, I don't see an issue about literally picking that whole facility up and moving it towards Lang Avenue. And then the distance, the distance from the, so assuming that happens, then you would be, again, by my quick and rough calculations here, be putting the, the rear of the stormwater basin into the area that's shown on the plan as between the existing right-of-way line and the future right-of-way line. I, if you moved it that far back, yeah. yes. That's what I was asking. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we can pro we can we can shift it. It might not be 20 feet, but we can still shift it and stay within the property <clears throat> if that 25 feet had, were were offered for dedication. So again, ideally, I would think that the future right-of-way area is something the township would want reserved in some fashion, right. either either dedicated now or indicated for dedication at the future if the township should need it. 
for whatever purposes, widening of the street, installation of stormwater facilities adjacent to it or the like, by taking that right of way that's not putting maintenance responsibility for that on us, it would nonetheless stay with the property owner as it currently, as it currently exists. It would also not create new and different rights for access onto Lang Avenue. The property fronts on Lang Avenue as it is today. Um, so they have frontage, whether there's, whether the township has a right of way area in between doesn't change their rights to tie into Lang Avenue. Um, the plan as is being proposed here doesn't do that. Um, and the plan as being proposed here would make any such connection virtually impossible. Um, so that's a very long-winded way of saying that if you can get that additional 25 feet of right-of-way, I don't believe there's a downside to the township doing that, um, provided it certainly doesn't stand in the way of what I think is the more imminent and more important purpose as a layperson, and that would be to get additional parking spaces on the property, um, addressing Mr. Polari's concern that if this business for some reason um, should relocate or you decide that you want to start to rent out the property to some other business, um, 15 parking spaces on the property versus 11 would certainly be more desirable. And the reason for that is because if they don't have it, they start parking in other people's parking lot to get to there, we need to protect ourselves from that now. Otherwise, that's a nightmare for us as a township. The mayor's office will be bombarded. We as council people will be bombarded. These people are parking on my property. What do we do? How do we handle this? That's why we have to have the right amount of parking spots now, not or, or just to find your business. Yeah, or blocking the fire lane for the fire in the driveway. Anybody's crazy enough to park on street road and try and get it out, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> But not saying it can't happen. But it, it is a concern to have the, the right amount of parking spots because, let's face it, I mean, down the road you may rent out, like Joe said, or you may like, lease part of the building to somebody else. You got to have enough parking for it and just figuring when the maybe eight or nine people that you might have come in, you know. If, if, you, move, if you move the drainage back to the 25, <laughs> not within the 25 foot, so we could have that for future if we needed it. How much more parking could you put on the back of the of the? Uh, we we probably many? we'd likely pick up two spaces, uh, just because of where you know where the toe of the, the toe of that slope ties back in. Uh, if you wanted me to keep all of my grading and disturbance out of that twenty five feet, we'd probably pick up two spaces, one on either side of the uh, one on either side of the parking lot. So what if you redesign the uh, basin? to become a basin? It, I mean, so we call it a rain garden just because of shallow and how shallow it is. It, it, I mean, it's, it's essentially acting as a stormwater management basin that takes care of the 100 year storm. Okay, uh, so. so answer my question. <laughs> I, it, it, I don't know that I would change it. It, it, is a, it is a stormwater basin. And if you made it deeper? So, uh, we're actually constrained by the downstream um, elevations of the downstream pipes. We are we are literally as deep as it possibly can be okay. at this point. Thank you. That answers that. Okay, I'm fine. And and the one other option in all of this is is that perhaps since we're dealing with lines on a page at the moment, 20 feet of right of way versus 25 feet of right of way might still accomplish the, the same purposes that the township would be looking to do, but would free up five additional feet for you to work with in terms mm -hmm. of, of where things fall on the page. So um, just something else to consider as well. The ordinance calls for the additional 25 feet, but council could say 20 or 15 additional feet would be satisfactory for what our perceived future needs are. Again, I don't think anybody perceives that we'll be widening Lang in, in the lifetime of anybody at this table, but we might need that area for additional drainage facilities or something like that. And 15 feet may be enough, or 20 feet may be enough versus 25. can't make it deeper can't make it deeper. Would you be willing then to add the, uh, since you say, I thought you'd get more than that, but let's say, would you be willing to add the additional four parking spaces at this juncture, at this time? Two, 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 two. I, 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 so it would be one on, one on each side, two total. 
if, if the 25 feet, um, and, I, and again, I, I'm, I'm looking at lines on, on the paper, making a judgment call. I think it's one on either side for two additional spaces. That's if it? we have that 25 feet. So how much, can, can, Mr. Paiso said we could lower the, or 15 feet. If you went to 15, so it's essentially a parking space is 10 feet wide. It, 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 they're they're, uh, they're so nine by 18. So we so went to 50, we, we made the right of way 15 feet in case we went to wide and lang a little bit. So we would have a little bit of room. I could probably pick up four spaces. Uh, and then you could pick up two spots on each side. Right. And like Mr. Kisselbach's asking, would you be willing to do that now? Because I, I, I think people are going to come in. I don't think everybody's going to be happy with just like getting an email to sign and uh, 18 page agreement and I've no, no one explain it to them, but that's just me. But uh, and I think people are going to go in there, whether you think it or not, and that people are going to go in there and meet people and you're going to get more people than you think that need to be there. Uh, whether it's a small, it's different as if it was like a, an accountant that only seen people a little bit at a time or like a professional, you know, whatever. Sure, but uh, right. you're going to have a gathering of people and like Mr. Player said, you could sell it to a different business. Would you be willing to do that? Put, add four spots. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Can, can you can you modify that basin to still accommodate the new permits? That's a good question. We'll have to definitely. I mean, that's all plays into it. I would be I would be more comfortable if we added two spaces. So if I could widen the basin, um, if we can get four with and and still accommodate the stormwater management of it, uh, then we certainly would would be willing to do that as well. I think there. Are well, if we, get, well if we, we made the right away 15 feet. Well, well uh, you're saying whatever it is, if you, it's more important to get a few more parking spaces in than it is for that right away. Right. And they're going to be maintaining that right away anyway. So make it 15 feet. So, but but spot. it depends on, on what the stormwater is and we can accommodate. But so does that mean we go back to the drawing board on this just for a little bit and come back? Table, you're saying? I don't know. I mean, that's a. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there, this is something we're all asking for, not the applicant. You need spaces. new calculations. The only other thing, I mean, and you'd still have to do new calculations on stormwater, but why not take those two bump outs at the back end of the building where the parking lot is, and make them parking spaces, and open up that back curve around the back of the building instead of moving everything but you're still going to have to recalculate but yeah we i do have to be careful about that i, I like okay. i like where you're going with that uh we might be able to do maybe a combination of both okay one at the top and one at the bottom yeah. on each side yeah okay i mean i'm one for landscaping myself but <laughs> i there it's a tight spot so so nothing. Is how, how are we comfortable with doing this? Are we comfortable going with it with modifications as long as they're approved by you guys, by the administration, by by you guys, or do we, we want us to go out and actually have it come back to us with the with the plans the way they're going to be? I mean, that's something the board has to. Joe, can we I, be? I would like to see it again, just because of the water, the storm water management, the the basin and the back and understanding that the calculations are still better off. Well, I'll, I'll add, yes, we will make sure of that, for sure. But no can, and can we make it conditioned upon I'm saying we want four additional spots, a minimum well, of four Well, let me spots. make, make, let me put another proposal out on the, on the, on the table there. What if you uh, guaranteed an extra two spots and then provide us with impervious, I mean, with pervious surface, the extension of the, of the, Second spot on each side. That way, it would still would not interfere with uh, with uh, stormwater management. It would give us the two spots that you're saying would be much easier for you to 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 work with. Mm -hmm. And then you'd also have the extra two spots in a overflow pervious type overflow parking where where actually you could park there because you say, hey, I'll, if I want to have a busy day, I can park there because I I'll be I, I, it's like when I have people over my my house. I park on the lawn sometimes because uh, I'm going to give them the space to, you know, to be, uh, to enjoy their parking and get out of there safely. Yeah, yeah, but that, I mean, that's a, a, that's a, another option that you may want to consider. And if it's working out well and such and everything is, uh, as you would say, maybe if someone would look, look at that property to purchase it later on, whatever, they can say, well, we can add the two spaces there. Or they're, they're already there. They're working. <clears throat> we have, we have locations of businesses in here that do have 
parking uh, with um, a hard type, you know, the hard type gravel. It's still is almost yeah. very, very similar to uh, yeah. uh, to a blacktop. So, from an engineering perspective, I mean, are you okay with not doing stormwater for impervious or pervious pavement? Did you say impervious? I'm sorry, impervious. I, impervious. I, impervious. <laughs> I did initially. I said it, but then I changed it. Um, well, yeah. I mean, that's 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 more of an issue for you as far as constructability, especially right. that. But uh, um, and it, and that pervious would be next to the basin. Correct. So right. I, I don't know how that would specifically work, but I mean, I think the whole process, whatever we're talking about, is doable in a number of ways. It's really an issue of what he can do with the water and then the left end, end that accommodates the extra impervious for, for parking. He's got to, he got to do the work. Do you think you should make that, reduce that to 25 to 15 feet, the, the uh, right of way thing well, in the back? Well, it depends. If you want to see it again, let's see what the options are and then, then make the decisions regarding the right of way. I don't, I don't care much about the right of way because they're already going to be maintaining it. We're doing drainage and that sort of thing there anyway. If we want to control it, that's different. Okay. Well, me, per, my, myself personally, if they wanted to, if they wanted to get it done tonight, if they wanted to get it done tonight, if we did it 15 feet in the back, and then they got us four spots, whether the other two spots have to be, uh, Ms. Champion just mentioned. I don't know if E.P. Henry uh, is impervious or not impervious. No, it's not. Yeah, no, it's not. The yeah, blocks. But uh, if they can get us four spots so. and we can reduce the right of way to 15 yeah, feet, then I'd be fine with approving it tonight based on them being able to so do that. So that just gives them 10 more feet to work with. Yeah, give them 10 more feet to work with. We, we're probably not going to need 25 feet anyway. And we have 15 feet in case we want to put widen the road a little bit or do whatever we have to do along the edge of Lang. And then they can get four spots. And if they can't get four spots, then they're going to have to come back. I have one question. Isn't there something that they did over at the one temple on Mechanicsville for um, overflow parking on the grass so you wouldn't be going in? Um, so it's not parking parking, but to the point that you were making, that he could park there on non-just wet days. I thought there was something, something like that. Under the ground to make it so you could pull on grass and have like heavy. Well, we've used grass stunner. pavers before. Yeah. I mean that that helps, but it still counts as pervious. Right. But if you have stone, or uh, impervious, it impervious. Counts, counts as impervious. I think they can get four spots in. Yeah, he's standing. I think it'd be better for the have yeah. those yeah. more yeah. spots, yeah. and it'd be more valuable yeah. if you go to sell it. It'd be more valuable because you have more spots. So your extra investment in putting four more spots. Is going to be good for your clients now and it's going to be good for your resale in case you ever have to sell it in the future you're going to have more spots to say hey i got i have 14 spots you know what i mean or I have you and know. he says that honestly too yeah. <laughs> so so i don't want to work I, for dishonest really can, can i piggyback on that suggestion then uh because i like what he said if if we would if if we would agree to the 15 foot right of way and we agreed to do the four spots with the proper, with the appropriate stormwater management. Approved by our engineer. Approved by the engineer. Uh, and then if for some reason that doesn't work out, then we do have to come back and, and modify the plan. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone who'd like to come forward and speak on behalf of this, or not on behalf of this uh, uh, development? I'm not seeing anyone come forward, I'll ask for a motion. If there's no more questions from our council, to be put on the, on the floor. And that's to approve or not approve. And this is for a preliminary and final. And final. I'll make a motion that we approve the preliminary and final for, where's the, um, whoever they are. PCME Property Management LLC, 4851 Street Road. Uh, we'll approve that with waivers. We'll waive number one for the required existing utilities. We'll waive number two for the wetland search certification. We'll waive the sidewalks along Street Road, no curb uh, sidewalks, but, but a fee in lieu of will agree to be paid as determined by our uh, engineer. Uh, we'll wait. What's that? And, and the same for, yeah, everything. Lang and Street Road, both the, along Lang Avenue and Street Road, all number three. Okay, we'll wave number four, wave number five. Uh, 
wave number six, and then the uh, fee in lieu of for number seven for uh, sidewalks in uh, along uh, Street Road and Lang will be included. We will we'll reduce the right of way to 15 feet, and the applicant will agree to work with our engineers and move back the uh, drainage, the uh, rain garden uh, and drainage, move it back so to put in four, two, four additional parking spaces on the back. Okay. And if they're able to, as agreed upon by our engineer, uh, get the proper uh, drainage, move back and add the four additional spaces on the back, two on each side, uh, then they will not, you know, we approve the, uh, based on that condition. If you're unable to do that, you would have to come back to us and, with a new plan. Number eight is on. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that, sorry. Um, I, I did think that on number two, section 201-41F, we were requiring the wetland certification. Exactly. Yes, uh, well, so we, that would well, not Mr. be a Well, Mr. Clary had asked a question a about supply. it, but then it not. I don't even know why that's a waiver. There's no wetlands. There's no wetlands. How do you know that? Because we have a record based upon our mapping and things like that. Mr. Blair had asked about that, but we didn't say whether. Well, the mm -hmm. reason I asked for it is because you're going to put a basin back there. There's already a stormwater management thing problem on the, in the Trevos area. If we're not going to check to see if there's a wetlands now, and I don't, I don't believe we've ever pretty you know, wet back there. had a, a wetland survey from anybody else that did their stuff up there, so I don't know why we would waive it for this. We have to make sure that we protect well, the well, people. Well, if there's not any, it's not hard to get a certificate saying there's not any, right? Right. Okay, so we'll, we'll include that, that they'll get a wetland certificate. If there isn't any, just put it in writing that there isn't any. Get a certificate saying that that's the case. So mm -hmm. we'll comply. And then, I'm sorry, Mr. Knowles, did you also add in that we would get an updated stormwater management calculation? based on the new... We didn't get to that. Uh, yeah, that's part of the engineer's approval for... And how about the uh, requiring existing utilities within 100 foot? Did we grant a waiver on that? It was my understanding we provided the uh, aerial context plan you, for that. We provide the aerial for that one, yeah. okay. Yeah. So that would be a waiver dependent upon you doing that, exactly. Yeah, I, I believe uh, that's already been submitted to the township as part of the request. Yeah, number one is an aerial context provided. It's already been provided or will be provided. He said it was already provided, so... Okay. That's part of the record. Number eight, uh, do we, uh, eight. permit planning, strip, strip planning parallel to the, uh, the proposed parking lot to be three feet. Uh, we did offer them a waiver for that and a permit area with 15 feet of drive property lines. Per parking area, 15. And we, we, we did, we did say a waiver for that too, right? Granted, number eight and nine. As for a planning strip and the uh, parking area with the 15 foot driveway of property, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, we, we said that waiver was real good. Yep. Okay, is there anything else, Mr. and Mr. Rep. No. <clears throat> Beyond that, all other items set forth in the January 18, 2023 review letter of TPD will be complied with to the extent we haven't otherwise. Uh, spoken of the waivers this evening, and the same is true of the January 18 traffic review of TPD. All items in that letter are will comply items. Mm -hmm. so yes. <laughs> okay, so that's the motion. I'll second the motion. Okay, motion to floor, I second it. Any additional discussion on the motion? Not hearing any, all those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? Unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. It's been real. And what is your name, sir? Engineer? Uh, Keith Marshall. From Marshall? C Keith okay. Marshall, yeah. CMC Engineering. Uh, CMC, okay. Yeah. I Thank appeared you. before you before. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, on to agenda item number six. This is a consideration and signing of agreements for Chick-fil-A, 3621 Horizon Boulevard. Uh, this is a, uh, an addition of a second driveway through lane. The, the uh, zoning office, the zoning classification is a PCD, planned commercial. 
The tax map partial is 02001-018-026. And uh, Mr. Pizer, I'm going to have you handle this one. Yes, thank you. Don't you look lonely over there. <laughs> Um, I, I don't have much to add to what you already said, Mr. Kisselback. The development agreements for the uh, Chick-fil-A project uh, on Horizon Boulevard have been received by the, uh, the uh, township. They were prepared by my office. Uh, they are executed and in a form acceptable for your consideration and approval this evening. All of the required escrow monies and fees associated with those agreements have also been received by the township. Okay, so we have a uh, consideration of the signing of agreement. We have uh, an A, which is the land development improvement agreements, and we have a stormwater best management practices. So we have an A and a B, but I think we can do them all in one motion. Yes, you can. So at this time, I will accept the motion on the floor to accept as we have a motion on the floor to accept. Second. We have a second on the motion. Those in favor signify with an aye. Aye, aye and against the abstentions. Okay, number seven. Request for a waiver as of curbs and sidewalks. I don't know how I could live without this. More waiver of curbs and sidewalks. This is on the uh, installation of the subject to a payment of a fee in lieu of. This is for uh, Mr. Frank Sadusky, 3430 Trevos Avenue, tax map parcel 02-004-150. Is there anyone here in the audience that would like to make a presentation on this behalf? Not that we need someone on this one. And Mr. Uh, Pizzo, would you like to elaborate on this one? Um, actually, I'll hand it off to uh, Mr. Wersta, other than to say that um, Township uh, Land Development and Subdivision Ordinance does provide for um, the waiver of curbs and sidewalks where they are otherwise required. Uh, that waiver has to be granted by council. Um, that way, the, uh, those ordinance provisions also require that in the alternative, the applicant is to provide a fee in lieu of the cost of constructing those uh, uh, improvements as is determined by the township engineer. So um, despite the fact that during the earlier uh, two land developments we were asking the developer if they were agreeable, I should remind all of you, particularly the newer members of the, the council, that your ordinance requires it's in either or. Either you're providing the curb and sidewalk or you're providing the fee and lieu of. So whether they're agreeable or not is of no consequence. The ordinance requires one or the other. All right, thank you. <coughs> Phil, would you like to add anything? Uh, no, sir. Okay. I just said it well. So I have a question. Okay. Looking at this on um, the house that this uh, property directly backs up to on Central and West End that does have a sidewalk coming down the Central side. And it also, on the West End, there's also sidewalks and there's curbs up on West End. I realize that on Trevos Avenue there are not curbs. But um, again, on the central side for the property that this property directly backs up to, there is a sidewalk. And you can see that current day um, on Google Maps. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't. So. They the wouldn't connect though, right? Well, well the sidewalk it. stops at the driveway. And I believe that driveway basically goes almost to the edge of the property line. I'm not exactly completely positive on that, but um, when you do the walking trail on Google Maps, you can see the sidewalk on Central Avenue, which this has a two-sided frontage, because it is an inter at the intersection. Phil? I'm going to hunt this to Mr. Neuron. Uh, just, I know he's looking that up right now. So quiet, I didn't even know you are in the audience, uh, Quentin. Sorry about that. Sorry. Huh? You know I love sidewalks. <laughs> you love it? What did you say? You know I love sidewalks. Oh. <laughs> I know. Just, so there looks like there is sidewalks along the upper street, this parallel with Trevos Avenue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's West End. West I'm End. Going? So yes, Trevos is here and West End's there, but the house that, that's on Central. That's on Central, but on no, yes. 
the house that butts directly back to this, mm -hmm. and it has the house behind it that it butts to has frontage on West End and on Central. Correct. And it does have a sidewalk coming down. Right. Whether the township put it in or not, there is a true sidewalk. Right. There. There's a sidewalk up there. I'm not sure where the actual location would be in reference to where we would install the curbing sidewalks. I don't see where anything comes down Central. It looks it, like there's a driveway coming down, but I saw like there's a bush. Now, if you look and you do the walking trail mm -hmm. on Google Maps, you can actually see it. Okay. Yeah, I was so, looking trying to see it. Would the sidewalk be able to, my question, and we could, I do think that if, and Mr. Pizer, correct me if I'm wrong, if we say somebody, you either have to put curbs and sidewalks or pay in lieu of, even if we, they might choose to put a sidewalk in, even though we would take the lieu of and not want sidewalks or prefer sidewalks, right? Right. So basically, like Mr. Pizer said, you either install the curbing and sidewalks where they need to be installed, or you pay the fee in low. It's one or the other. So basically, if one of the things that we talked about the engineer was, since we thought there might have been a drain at the corner of Central and Trevos, that we would have actually have curbing installed to help with the drainage up there. Since there's not a inlet on that radius, um, we chose to waive that requirement for the curbing, um, which would then also waive the sidewalks, just because that whole area and intersection would have to be um, a design of the entire intersection, which would might be adding storm sewers, um, which would not be the responsibility of this developer who's building this house, it would be on the township. So that plane, we do not have a plan. So we, even if we put the curbing where we would like to have the curb, it would be a whole scheme of things that we'd have to look into and not just have this guy put the curbs in where he thinks he would go. The question is, you believe that the waiver. The waiver of right now would be, would be, the, be better best, best right, just because of where everything exists out there. Um, but we were trying to get the curbing installed, but when we looked at the overall picture, we didn't think it was feasible. And it, it's something that we're going to have to take serious in Trevos anyway because of the stormwater problems Correct. up there anyway. So this is going to have to be, and we would have it, the money in, For the, in the account to do the curb and Correct. sidewalks once we can do the drainage and everything else along with it. Correct. Thank you. That's why we chose the waiver. Our plans for that as well, Mr. Mr. Cleary, are a more of a global with regard to uh, our stormwater management in there rather than piece by piece. I agree. I'm not disagreeing with you. And I just wanted to understand it better because I did see the sidewalks on the other, on the property at Abutsto. So, right. Um, so, I don't yeah, know. so I'm looking at it now as you speak. They're up against the sidewalk that you're referring to. It looks like it's right up against the edge of the road right now. Yes. Okay. It so, looks like they did put it in themselves in a sense. Correct. Probably to alleviate storm water issues that they were probably getting. Possible. And there is a true curb, though, on West End Avenue that I don't necessarily know if they put in somebody else. Had and I know there's been curves in that area. There are some people that do have like a little mix of curves that they've installed. But if if I'm thinking correctly, that road's probably about 18 to 20 feet wide. And we would make it a 26 foot wide road. So that means the curb's going to be back another three foot behind where the edge of the road is now. And then you're looking at another five or six feet back for the back of the sidewalk. So even the sidewalk that they have on Central would need to be pushed further back to get into where we need it to be. And that house wouldn't be able to be built then. Correct. So that's why it is a, a small whole, lot. Right. So we would have to look at that whole schematic mm -hmm. before we actually had anybody do anything like that. But they have some good looking curbs and sidewalks though without that house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, troublemaker, anything else? I'd like to understand it. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was a great question. Yeah, I'm kidding. Very good. Okay, can we make a motion? or? Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, waiver for curbs and sidewalks uh, and the applicant will pay in, in lieu of, as determined by our uh, engineer. I right, have a motion to the floor. Second. Second on the motion. Any additional discussion? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And against? We have one no. Okay. All right. That, you don't have to be sorry. Okay. So it's a 4 1. No abstentions. You guys are getting crazy out here tonight, right? <laughs> okay. Mr. President, do we have to add this other item? Yes. Uh, we didn't have that at the beginning. We had, uh, the addendum. The addendum. We need to add that. Yeah, and that was my fault. I should have added that earlier on. Thanks, Joe. I just want to remind you this. <laughs> yeah. Here, it's, it's on my next. That's why I'm the secretary. It's on my, it's on my list to do. Here it is, the next one to go. All right, we have a uh, we have an addendum uh, to the uh, to the uh, agendas this evening, and that's on uh, the land development and stormwater management agreement for Guy E. Dalfo 
and Deborah Dalfo, and this is on Bristol Road and Palm Avenue. It's a highway commercial, highway commercial district text map parcel 02018-003. And so we'd like to add that to the agenda first as agenda item 7A. So we have a motion on the floor. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? Unanimous. Thank okay. You. Um, well, you're asking for a, um, what is it you're asking for? Let me ask you that. Stormwater Management Agreement? You it? Yes. Uh, what you, you, you've now approved an amendment Are of you your agenda. Are you here for this? We didn't approve. <laughs> oh, I'll just add it to the agenda. Yeah. It, 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 so, so don't, uh, we don't want to end the suspense. Hold on just one second. So now before you are the land development improvement agreement and stormwater management agreements for Guy and Deborah Dalfo for the property of Bristol Road and Palm Avenue. Again, the uh, agreements were prepared by my office. Uh, they've been executed by the, by the uh, property owners. In fact, they were uh, executed some time ago. The, uh, the fees and related escrows associated with the project um, were received by the township in between the time that the agenda was set and this evening's meeting, which is why uh, it, we're asking that you agen amend the agenda, which you have, so as to afford them the opportunity to get started on the project and not have to wait until your next council meeting. So the agreements are in order and acceptable for your consideration and approval this evening. And so these are just uh, uh, agreements that we're signing? Just as you did we for have, Chick fil A moments ago. Which we have approved ago. already, okay. Yes. All right. Is there any, anyone in the audience like to come forward and speak yeah, on behalf or not for this uh, agreement to be signed? Nope. Okay. Then I'll ask for a motion to be put on the floor I'll for. A motion that we agree, we agree to with accept the land development stormwater management agreements as presented. All right, and that's for, for both the um, both of the agreements, correct? Second. Okay, we have a second on the motion. Any additional discussion? All those in favor? Let's Aye. have a drum roll, ladies and gentlemen. The answer is? Aye. Aye. Abstain. 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 We have, we have two abstentions, and so it's a three to two vote. And yeah. the reason the ladies are abstaining because they were not part of the initial um, consideration on this project. All right, good luck, gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming out. Hope you enjoyed your evening with us tonight. Thank you. Okay, on to agenda item number uh, seven. I'm uh, on to, we did 7A, we're on to agenda item number eight, public comment. Is there anyone who'd like to come forward? We have a lovely lady, lovely lady waiting to come up. I hope it's good news you bring to, to us. Colleen Sweski, 2032 Hansel Drive. So I just wanted to see if there was an update on the Armstrong property. Boy, that's a good question on that one. I don't know what they're doing there, no to tell you the okay. truth. I don't think anybody does, but I'll let our professionals comment on that. Um, Mr. Engineer, Phil? I know nothing's happened from a development perspective that we know of, but there has been some ongoing maintenance and and uh, and other sundry type of things happening out there. Uh, Quentin, do you want to comment on what you've been seeing out there? So I know our public works department had an issue, I think last week they did a demolition on the existing shed. Um, there was some kids I think hanging out there or something like that from what I understand. So that was done. Um, I know recently we had an issue with some sanitary issues that the EP was involved with. Um, we know that there was a fence removed. We don't know who took the fence out, but we're still keeping an eye on that when we're in that area. So. What was the sanitary problem? Was that it was a sanitary block that's coming from the apartments through the main. Has that been handled yet? Or? That was opened up last week. Okay. Did that affect any of the water issues they were having on Hansel? Was that, that was re in re yeah. relation? So, yeah, yeah, so there was, there was um, I think a call came in from residents that Bucks County went out to overnight uh, because of the stench. So that's how we got involved in the morning. Okay. So Ooh. this is, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that that's part of the continual issue that 
has been there for decades, in a sense, from Bucks Meadows. What is Bucks County Water and Sewer doing about that? Anybody have any idea in terms of improving that? Yeah, it's a private line that was jetted. Um, there was a lot of grease in the line that was cleaned out, from what I understand. It's coming from the apartments. Correct. The so it's their responsibility. Correct. So, so what, wait, I'm sorry, once, I apologize. The, the fencing that, uh, that was taken down on the street road, doesn't that still need to be there for now with the construction going on? Have they been cited for that? I'd have, to, I'd have to check. I'm not sure if there's any activity out there. I know that one area still has fencing, but I think it's fenced on the, along their actual roadway that you can get access into the property was removed. Right, but the roadway can go to the people the in Hansel Drive and could cause problems there. People cutting through, you know, it's a nice place to do drug deals and stuff because it's not near anybody. Um, Mr. Paisa, can we look into that and see if he needs to still keep that fencing up there and keep that protected from there? Certainly. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry, I have one more question related to the drainage. So is there a requirement, I'm not sure if Mr. Paisa knows or Mr. Worcester knows, from a um, code perspective or even you know, on what they need to do to have that um, sewer line continually maintained on their side so it doesn't happen? since it is a private line that was installed. I don't know if there's any sort of code in terms. I know that, you know, if you have a septic system, in some places you have to show proof of having it cleaned out every two septic. years. I know it's not septic, but I'm saying and that's a private thing in a sense. I know I'm asking from a line connecting into the county sewer, is I'd there any requirements? I have to check with Bucks County Water and Sewer. I know they do monitor, like, restaurants with their grease traps. Um, we were involved with them as well for some issues up with that, which is further down Street Road. But I don't know of anything but their actual mains being tested. So, so I, can call, I, I do can know that it. Sam Wexler Plumbing was out on the property for the Bucks Meadows and confirmed that the sewage system backed up into our storm drains, or into the storm drain that cuts across, cuts across Armstrong coming to Hansel Drive that that storm drain is completely collapsed. And so no water runs until we fill up. It is completely collapsed. So our, the sewage now went into our storm drain and then backed up into our sewers on our properties. So we literally were rolling around in sewage on our property. You couldn't walk on Tasha's lawn, my lawn, it was, the street was bubbling of is, sewage. Yeah. Is this the first you're bringing it to our attention? No, we've been here for m months uh, no, and we, years. We just, right. I've been here for years about the storm strain yeah. issues on Hansel Drive. Years. Before the flood. After the flood. Like, I, the, the amount of, the amount of corrosion in the, the, the property over there that our kids use, that the dogs walk on, that the people use for cricket, somebody is going to die. The, a kid is going to fall into a corroded ground in storm drains that are corroded. The, the pockets in that property, and it's not fenced off, it's open to the public. And now it's contaminated with sewage. By Quinn. Has anybody notified the residents of, Quinn, of Ben Taylor? May I have you respond to what we're doing on this or not doing on this and what we should be doing on this? Okay. So, regarding the sanitary, the sanitary was coming out of a manhole of the, of the sanitary system. There's two separate systems. You have a drainage system with stormwater, you have a sanitary system. So, the sanitary system was clogged because of the blockage from the apartments. The sewage was coming up out of a manhole, going out to the surface, going into the storm sewer system. That's why the smell went downstream, we'll say. Um, DP did find solids um, on the other side of the street road, which that system connects through and goes through the Wendy's and the other shopping centers. Um, they notified the owners that they had to remove all those solids, which I have not heard back from DP, but they were supposed to be following up on that. Um, now, in regards to the sanitary sewers and the water bubbling up out of the streets, when I was there, I didn't see anything, but I was late coming in that day. Um, but that storm sewer is checked on a regular basis and there hasn't been any clogs or blockages as far as I know. Now, do we have any jurisdiction over its Buck Me Bucks Meadows, as you say? Is that what you said it was? Yeah, Bucks Meadows. Bucks Meadows. Bucks. They're the ones that own the private line. But have we gone in there and, and have taken any kind of action at all? I have not. 
So you could, should, because that's what Box well, Meadows looks like. Uh, could I, mean, I direct you to, to like. take a look at it? To, well, more than take a look at it, to okay. come back with some kind of a... Do you want to see what Box Meadows looks like? I mean, this I is... Do. I have a mice problem. Do you want to know why? Here, bring it over here. Come on. Uh -huh. This is Box Meadows. Uh, Quentin, this, this, I mean, this yeah, may be okay, a question for Mr. Paizo, too, but I mean, the fact that they... Gonna, that's in your back that's not, that's not acceptable. I know. The, the fact this that they're... Because I heard this. I don't know if I heard it on the news or heard it on, 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 social, on media. Public social media. But... Um, the fact that Bucks Meadows, everybody's throwing the word private line out, you know, that doesn't mean that they can contaminate. There's a public health issue, right? I mean, you can't just have a private sewer line and just say, because there was a rumor that they said, well, we don't want to put the money out to fix it so that people are just going to have to smell it, you know, that live at the apartments for now. But there's a public health issue, right? It doesn't yeah, matter what You have to maintain that line. Yeah, the fact that it's private doesn't mean anything. They still no, have to means, maintain it. It just means that the... Bucks County Water and Sewer is not a public utility. Can, so, here's here's uh, what I'd like to ask you to do. Uh, I don't want you to come back in two weeks when we have our next council meeting and say, well, we're looking at it. I want to have some type of positive action drawn towards Bucks Meadows in terms of cleaning what this lovely lady just showed me in terms of the trash on the, on the, on the property. More importantly, I'll have to bring Phil in on this one, too, as far as the engineering itself with the... Um, I guess it would be grease and such backing it up. We have to have we have to be able to take some kind of a punitive action to get a reaction from the Bucks Meadows because if we don't do anything, they're not going to do anything. They should. And, that, and the, then the problem is, uh, granted, that needs to be fixed. But then the storm drain. I mean, that storm drain is crudit. Do we have to wait for Genghis Which Pandaya storm drain to are you referring to? The one that runs through Armstrong, that comes directly into Hampshire Drive. You're saying between the art that, or you're saying how do you know no, it's the, plum the plumber the Sam Wexler Plumbing said that drain is completely corroded. It's the one it's between collapsed. the properties between Snyder and Armstrong. Yes. That's directly behind. Yes, it is. Is, is that our property, collapsed. Phil? Is that the, is that the, the uh, sanitary sewer? No, she's talking about the storm sewer that runs through the comp. It's that completely field. collapsed. So collapsed. I think it's collapsed. It's collapsed. If you walk back there, you will. I have showed you I've I've showed you before and the last time I was here the storm drains where they're coming up out of the ground where they've the 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 water has eroded down underneath the sewers water doesn't go uphill <laughs> so <laughs> let's say pump it right Phil can you, can you get her address and telephone number and 2032 can, Hansel Drive Quinn can we find out if there's they're having grease problems there. It's been going on for Thanks. a long, long time. Don't they have to have some kind of grease traps or well, something? According to them, legally? they were never aware of any I'm grease sorry, problems. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I know. the engineer, please. Is, shouldn't they have to have grease traps or something if they're, they're putting grease out of those pipes through the general public? I mean, restaurants have to have grease traps. Yeah, right. Correct. If it's a problem from that apartment, apartment complex, complex, why shouldn't they have to do that? Why shouldn't we be able to, to make them do that so these people don't have to take, put up with this? I'd have to check with Bucks County Water and Sewer to see if there's any codes that they can force that issue. But with. if it's not their line, can well, the... Can, can, if there's a code that says you have to, yes. I know restaurants, so there is codes for that. But this is an apartment, it's like a residential place, it's like almost like a multifamily dwelling, basically. So okay. would Bucks County Water and Sewer have to have a code, or could we have an ordinance to say that, that apartments... Was, that was the next thing I was going to say. Right, then you'd have is to that the more immediate but action? It, but it so, it so, right. so, so, a couple things. Right. If there was a sewage overflow, as Quentin described, DEP would be involved. It was. Okay, and so D and the Department of Health, but certainly DEP, they take these things very seriously. Um, and in terms of in terms of cleanup, and in terms of whatever correction action, corrective action needs to take place, and in terms of finding, they are very aggressive and very very serious about these sorts of things. So DEP, if DEP was called out and DEP was on the case. DEP is certainly doing what it would do because a sewage overflow is their jurisdiction. Can we make sure that the EP knows about these property owners that are having this problem and make them clean that up and do what needs to be done? 
to make those property whole? As far as a private sewage line, it ultimately flows into the Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority system. That's how it gets from here to the Philadelphia treatment plant where sewage from Ben Salem is ultimately treated. The Bucks Water and Sewer has regulations as to what you can flow into their system and what your facilities, how they have to be constructed, how they have to be maintained. So if Bucks was out, to, did Bucks do the jet or was that a private? That was the private, that was the same okay. plumbing. Was there. So we need to get Bucks involved because again, their jurisdiction is with anything that's flowing into their system, they have some say. As to the a buildup of grease through the line, whether it's just something that's with age, typically our plumbing code does not require grease traps, um, I don't believe, for residential properties. It does for commercial properties that generate grease, primarily restaurants and grocery stores, supermarkets, so prop buildings like I'm that. Um, we function off of the international plumbing code. So the Whatever the International Plumbing Code requires by way of grease traps, that's what Ben Salem Township requires by way of grease traps. We also implement whatever regulations Bucks Water and Sewer asks us to put in place by virtue of the fact that they are the residential and commercial sanitary sewer provider for this community. So the two agencies that really need to be contacted and brought in on this, DEP's already in, we'll have to bring Bucks Water and Sewer in as well. And we can get you, we can get you some follow-up as to, you know, if we ask them to go out and, and you know, take a look at this sewer line, perhaps uh, uh, if, if the property owner isn't willing to allow us to voluntarily or allow them voluntarily to televise it or otherwise inspect it, then we'll work with Bucks to, to do what needs to be done to address the problem. But ultimately, the jurisdiction for all of these things is with the state, with the County Department of Health, and with the County Water and Sewer Authority. Yeah, I understand that, but we need to keep our fingers on this too. Can you work together with Quentin and make sure that gets done, please? All right, so then you're gonna take the responsibility, Joe, is that correct, to follow through in this whole uh, I coordinated will, with the I will engineer? I will work with the, 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 the engineers and the, and okay. the code department. Yeah, that uh, way I know it's getting done, yeah. as opposed to several people promising. So I do have one question, lost. Joe, you referred to since their apartments, they're residential in nature even though they're it's considered commercial in a sense right. for other reasons. So the code wouldn't apply to them, given the number I, of things? I, I, I'm not, I don't want to tell you chapter and verse what the plumbing code says, but in my, in my experience doing this and doing work with, with water and sewer authorities, generally speaking, apartment buildings are generating residential household sanitary sewage waste no different than what an individual house does, it's just in a greater quantity. And so typically the sewage lines that service an apartment building are larger than the ones that service your home, but at the end of the day, the, the nature of the sewage that is going into those lines would be no different in theory from your, from your house to, to an apartment. Uh, a restaurant, on the other hand, where they're cooking and grease goes into the, the sewer lines and things like that, grease traps are required because you will get grease built up. It's why in my household, you know, we generally don't use the garbage disposal and we certainly, you know, don't put a lot of things down into the garbage disposal because ultimately grease builds up in the line that goes from the basement of your house yeah, you to the street it. in the line, yeah. and when that grease builds up over time, eventually it's going to be coming out of the toilets in your house. So as convenient as, as, as garbage disposals may be, you're ultimately putting food and fats and, and biosolids into your sewer line, and as they make the trip from the house to the curb, this may be more information than anybody wanted at this time or this hour, but those things do tend to build up in the sewer lines in front of your house. But it's also the stuff coming out of the apartments that's going into right. East Oaks' yard and, to, and destroying their property. Yes. I have two questions for Mr. Paizo. Um, would it be feasible to, to expect a report from DEP 
by the end of this week? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. since, 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 yeah, I since like timelines. 10 minutes ago was the first I heard of any of this, I, I would not be doing you any service to say where anyone is in any status of dealing with any of this. So tomorrow morning, you know, I'll circle the wagons with Mr. Farrell, with Mr. Worcester, with Quinton, with anyone else in the, in the township administration who's involved in this, and we'll, we'll figure out a plan of attack to figure out, A, where things are, and B, who we need to, who we either need to bring into the process or who we need to nudge. Okay, and so, I, I just want it so, to be a priority as my point, and I would well, like an update, yeah, okay? And then my second question is, with regards to the apartments, I, I hear what you're saying, but it's, you know, residential times 100, okay? Are we, do we have the authority to make a change to that code, or is that something Bucks County Water and Sewer would have to do? Ultimately, our plumbing code is ours. Again, we typically and historically follow the International Plumbing Code as we do the International Electrical Code, as we do the International Building Code, as we do the International Property Maintenance Code. So that's not to say that we can't modify them, but to the extent that we are going to do so, it's not just, a, okay, we're going to require grease traps for apartments. There is some some background work that would have to go into that to justify it because it would affect every apartment complex in the township, not just uh, Bucks Meadows. And I'll tell you that they are not inexpensive to install or maintain. And would that, would, would that require us to, uh, I guess, hire somebody to consult with and gather information for the apartment? properties so that we could begin that process I and don't determine know, if but, we can but hearing hearing your concerns that it may be something that we need to do understand again we have uh, I believe upwards of 40 apartment complexes in this in this community of varying sizes um, the problems that are being discussed this evening vis-a-vis -vis Bucks Meadow and the sewer line that approaches Hansel Drive are not the commonplace occurrence throughout the township so so I don't want to, I, I don't, I wouldn't recommend that we go through an all, all out assault on all of the businesses in the community to deal with one that happens to be problematic. So let's, let's first deal with the one that we know is a problem and perhaps figure out why it seems to be a bigger problem than any of the others of its, of its kind within, within the community. Right. Right. It could be the collapse of the pipe for the, some other There, there could be also, something exactly. else going on of which we're not aware. There could be something else flowing into that sewer line of which we're not aware. And that could be the source of, of the problem. So, so. Um, this isn't new, so we have to make this a priority at this point. We should, should have made it a priority a long time ago, but well, we need to make this a priority well, to get it, this done. You're right, Joe, and it is a priority. You're absolutely correct. And that's why... Mr. Pizer is going to handle it from, from, from the top part of it, and then we have our engineer, we have Quentin also, our so township just engineer. Just to be aware, I am the fourth house from the corner, and every one of those homes have had sewage issue in their house. Well, Tasha, two weeks before the flood, has flooded with sewage. So it's an ongoing issue. It's not just something that happened once. It happens all the time. All right, you shouldn't have to live like that. It's crazy. Uh, you and, know, the and fact that in my limited I've recollection, I called and asked for uh, when you when when the township or Bucks County Water Sewer paid for my neighbor um, to have a check valve put in. They told me no that I would have to pay for it myself. But water flows to the next path of least resistance, and that would be my house. Okay. So. Well, we're obviously, by you being here, you brought it to our attention. As Mr. Pazza just said, we just heard about it. That's why I had asked you earlier, you know, have, have you presented us before? And you said, of course, I knew, I recognize but the, you. But the I know that, I recognize sewer. you, but let us take it from here. Please, I'm inviting you to come back to our next meeting, which would be the February 13th. Okay. Um, and we're going to give you an update, hopefully before that, but at least at that meeting, as to us actively pursuing this in a very tangible way that will help you. Because yeah, I can't imagine. We just need imagine. the stormwaters on that property and the sewage yeah, we're, on we're, that we're, property. We're quite a well of, of Hansen, uh, Hansel Drive, excuse me, uh, having these problems for, for quite some time. I think 
a little bit even prior to um, Quint was at my house 10 years ago there. for water. So yeah, it's okay. So it's been something prior it's not a, to that. It's not a, <laughs> you've been alerted many, many times. And, and, and as you alluded to, and I have a very limited recollection post the, the, the July storms of a few years ago, but the sewer line in your street has been an issue even prior to that. So I, you know, I, I, I don't know what everybody's expectations are going to be. I'm going to, we are going to reach out to Bucks Water and Sewer regarding this most recent incident. But there is, I believe, some history with that sewer line. So I don't know what Bucks Water and Sewer is going to say vis-a-vis -a, -vis a long term whatever, but we'll, all of the information I've heard this evening, all of the information the township already has, we're going to take the Bucks Water and Sewer and see what, see what the story is. Okay, so there's that then to the Armstrong property. So you said the shed was taken down. We'll have some sort of update on the fence then, and then somebody will look at the pipe or walk the property, the Snyder property and the Armstrong property where the drainage is coming through um, that feeds behind Hansel Drive that goes through over Hansel. And we'll have information about that prior to the meeting. So at least we're aware. And, and a reminder, obviously we'll look into the, as Mr. Polari asked and as Ms. Champion asked, we'll, we'll look into what is required of the site in regard to fencing. Um, there may be, there may still be a requirement, there may not, I don't know. The fencing was put up during the demolition of the school. Um, and uh, just a reminder to, you know, the world, it's private property. It's not, you know, anyone who's going on there is trespassing. If they're not, if they're not there, if they're not otherwise a government entity out there dealing with something, or they're not otherwise an invitee of the owner of the property, they're trespassers. Could you give us a, people on that property? Can you give us a written list of things that you know of? Sure. And then of everything that and, happened. And you can forward sure. to the mayor's office, care of uh, uh, Mr. Paizo. Will do. And now because there's, there may be one little thing that we're looking at, a major part of it, and miss a little, little something that's very important to you. Yeah, I mean, it's just an all-over issue. But Student you can give us a list. So, so you can give us a checkoff list so we can okay. go down it in Will a do. very uh, lethargic. Yep very important way. So there's no requirement for them for all that rubble that's remained still on Armstrong property where they did do the demolition. There's no requirement for them to take that off. They can leave all of that there. I don't know what the demolition, like, I don't know what the demolition, what the demolition permit allowed or didn't allow. Uh, in many cases, if there are remnants from a demolition that could otherwise be used as fill for future development uh, prop, future development of the property. And if the property owner requests it and the township agrees, then you know that sort of item will be allowed to remain on the property because it's going to be used in the future. I have no idea what the what the demolition permit for the property for says, but we'll we'll take a look at it as well. For perpetuity? Because it's been how certainly many years not now? for perpetuity, but again, you know, the 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 developer was in 15, 16 months ago and got their land development approvals. It's this developer we haven't heard from, but that period of time from approval to to putting shovel and dirt for a project of that size and scope certainly wouldn't be out of the ordinary. No. Um, but. It would also wouldn't, it, it is somewhat out of the ordinary that the township's heard nothing. So I don't expect that we would be seeing shovel and dirt anytime soon. So we'll take a look and see what their, what their demolition what? permit allows and doesn't allow. Because it's also an eyesore as you drive down he as a township. Talking about the lights. He owes Honey Boo Boo $8,500. You can't pay it. <laughs> Honey Boo Boo? Honey Boo Boo from the show? Honey Boo Boo? Yeah, Honey Boo Boo. He does? He owes Honey Boo Boo eighty five hundred dollars. He does. She did, yeah, she did appearances at Pizza Hut. <laughs> he owes a lot of money to a lot of people. Oh, I know he does. I didn't realize that. I know he owes a lot of money to a lot. Of people. But yet they still kept keep lending him money to buy more stuff. Let's put it that way. That's not, unfortunately that's something we can do about that. Either. No, absolutely not. It's the idiot banker who's uh, approving it. So. Well, everybody here knows me, Natasha from twenty forty seven Hansel Drive. 
Um, so yeah, that uh, sewage came right from behind, came right to behind my house. But we have uh, Colleen had brought pictures in after the July um, flood with those, and you guys kind of disregarded them and said this is not a problem. That is, that's been a problem for longer than I've been living here for, I think, the past 20 years. I contacted Bucks County Water and Sewage and said, what can we do? Because we cannot continue to have problems on our property. And they agreed to do a maintenance plan, which they never felt, they never went through with. Um, if it's not the residents of Hansel Drive calling them to come and look and check and see what that smell is, what it's coming from, the last two times, the guy kept knocking on my door and he says, well, I don't know where the problem's coming from, everything looks good. So this is not a problem that started this past Monday. This is a problem that's been going on for at least a few months. The smell comes from the back. Um, Bucks County Water and Sewage does have a lawsuit against them as of 2019, uh, which started in Plumstead. The agreement was that they were going to upgrade and maintain um, their sewage lines. Against Bucks Meadows owners? Mm-hmm. And if you look into it, they've had to sell bonds or whatever because they cannot afford to pay uh, to, to redo all of this. It's, it's a lot. Bucks County is really big. Um, but the, from what we were told is that they have no jurisdiction on the, the apartments because apparently there was some argument between the apartment owners and Bucks County Water and Sewage. So they would maintain that every three months, and now they are not allowed to touch that so, the night that that happened, which was last Monday night, um, you know, we're in an uproar. The, the guy's like, I, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, Bucks County Water and Sewage has a trail of notes and documentation saying that they cannot go onto that property. So, if they cannot go onto that property, something else needs to be done to allow them to do that. DP was called, yes, and they said it was taken care of, but it has not been taken care of, obviously, because you guys don't even know about it, so... It's which property? The Armstrong property? It, so it, it, it starts at the apartments and it crosses through the Armstrong property. Those drains are all throughout the property and they're all caved in. We've, we've brought these pictures to the township. What you're trying to distinguish Bucks Meadows and Armstrong. You're talking about two of Yeah, but it comes sewage, right through the Armstrong property. The sewer drains the, come through the Armstrong the property? The sewage drains, the, the, <coughs> the water, the... The stormwater management. Drains through the Armstrong property. But wait, and so there's two different types of drains, right? Yes. There's the sewer drains mm -hmm. and the stormwater drains. Which both come through the Armstrong property. Okay, so which ones are you saying are collapsed? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to understand. And I'm thinking it's the stormwater drains. The stormwater drains. Okay, so the sewage drains are backing up. The no, that, on the that are So one's here, one's here, one's backing up, and it's overflowing and going into the open stormwater cracks. Correct. Yes. Correct, and which is now coming behind my house because, as you guys know, that's where the retention pond is, and going between my property and my next door neighbors because that's that. Um, no, not you, the no. other neighbor. <laughs> um, it goes right through the pipe, through the two drains. By the way, two drains that we have on Hansel Drive to collect so much water. Um, and if you looked in there, you could see the water. I have pictures of that. You can smell it. it smells terrible. Okay, well, Mr. Pizer just said that he believes that Bucks County Water and Sewer has some authority to make them maintain their, their pipe that's connected to their system. So even though it's private, it's not that Bucks County Water and Sewer can't do anything. So you're checking into that, what, what could be done. That'll be, department, that'll be a public health yeah, that issue. Can't, yeah, they can't. Besides public health, it connects the Bucks County Water and Sewer. You just can't connect stuff to Bucks County Water and Sewer and not maintain it and cause problems to their system they would have a right to have you correct it. Now, they might have to take them to court or whatever. I don't know, but uh, but they're going to make, Joe's going to follow up Bucks County Water and Sewer, and they're going to try to make them maintain their pipe and fix it. They have to fix it. It could be Bucks County's pipes themselves. It could be their pipes that have collapsed. Or is any yeah. of the responsibilities. Or, or, or it could be an issue wholly unrelated to the county if, uh, you know, it's, uh, again, I know, it's, I'm we're, 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 si we're sitting here, uh, you know, we're sitting here. We're saying the same thing, though. We don't. Engaging you in. You guys are going to check it. We'll be back on the 13th. Yeah, Thank you. I, 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 my point is that Hansel Drive cannot take any more. Okay, I, my house cannot take any more. I can't deal with any more sewage. I can't deal with any more flooding. I can't deal with anything else. 
and basically the future of our house is in your hands. And I've heard it before that we're priority and we're priority and we're priority, but I don't see any action. And I've said it before here, actions speak louder than words. I agree. So I agree with you 100%. I, I'm glad that you guys agree with me, but I need to see some movement. I agree with you too. Because I'm, 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 I'm I done. Tell. I'm, I can tell. I'm My physically, God. emotionally, and financially completely strained. We I'm can blown. fight with you. We can fight for you. But the decisions ultimately aren't us. It's getting the DEP to do the right thing with the apartment complex. And the I, people at Armstrong School to do their thing. As far as it goes with us, we can fight the fight with you. But I, I understand that. Together. It's not us saying no. No, no, I understand that. But you guys have to have to show that you're fighting with us because we get nothing from you guys sometimes. Okay, I and I, I feel like there's a closed door against us, and we've kind of been pushed off to the no, side because we're not it's complaining not the about case, things. But I, I, understand, I certainly understand what you're saying, and my empathy goes out to all of you being here tonight. And I just can't believe I'd like to be right next to you talking the same thing that you're saying to us. It's like it doesn't make sense what you have to go through. Yeah, I mean, you came to Ben Salem, you're in a beautiful house, a beautiful neighborhood, and this is what you have to put up with? I mean, I, I, I can't believe it either. I agree with you 100%. We all do. We all do, absolutely. Believe me. This is a priority. So Let in me two tell weeks, you, it's a priority. In two weeks when we come here, you guys are going to tell us this is what has been done. Yes. This is where we're going. This exactly. is what's happening. That's, that's what I su suggested, and that's what we're going to do. The administration okay. is going to do it and bring it to us so you'll know at this meeting. The administration is the ones that handle all this stuff, not the council. The council doesn't, that's not the council can mm -hmm. do. We push the administration. They do work hard on this. They're not sitting back doing nothing, but we, we're not the ones to control everything that goes on. It's the administration that handles that. Correct. Part. But you I, are I, the people that we come to. Right. Exactly. Right? I we want you to come back. You I want so that you could fight for us. Correct. And you're the ones that we go to. You're the middleman, unfortunately. That's just the way it I is. I want you're you to correct. be here at our next council meeting because I want you to hold our feet to the fire. And, oh, I will. And, uh, and that's good. And Quentin, Mr. Paizo, Mr. Worsta, you guys are on the firing line right now, so you have to get that information to us so that we're not looking like the bad guys. I mean, we're, we're doing this together. We need answers, and we need answers soon because this has been going on way too long. I guarantee so if the all mayor you guys have to be that, the that, same That's thing. fine. I, and, 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 and just one, one, other, one other word is that Again, I'm I'm not the most well versed in the in the problems that confront Hansel Drive, and Lord knows there are many of them. There are some problems that exist out there that, at the end of the day, government cannot solve. First of which is the fact that the houses exist where they exist and were built where they were built on top of what they were built on top of, and I'm not the most well versed in in that story. Ms. Ms. Champion is smiling because she, she understands what I'm saying, that there are some issues inherent with the location of those houses uh, and when they were built, where they were built, that, that I don't know that, yes, we can deal with questions regarding storm sewers and, and sanitary sewers and things like that, but some of the issues regarding the fact that the properties flood I, I think are inherent in the fact of, of, of what happened and where and the time they were built and where they were built and what they were built on top of. I do understand that, but I also understand that this grease trap problem has been something that has been there for a long time and nothing's getting done about it. It's sitting there with this grease backing things up and these neighbors having this problem because something's not going on. Now DEP's involved. You know, let, let's get a, uh, this solved. I mean, there's got to be something that solves it. This apartment complex, it's no different than a residence, but the, the, all the, the backups and everything are going to the residence, not to the people who live in their apartments. And that's not right. So something yeah. has to be done. Right. If they're backed up into the apartments, they'd be taken action. Yeah, that's right. Let it back up into the apartments and let them have to clean up the mess and not these Yeah, folks. but it doesn't. It comes downstream, right? Yeah. Because that's just uh, the way it flows. <laughs> We can't guarantee that you're going to like the answers that we're going to give you, but we're going to give you the answers. Uh, no, and, and we're I, going to try to be right alongside of you, resolving it so it, it can be. I am well aware that this isn't a situation that's going to be resolved in a day or two, and I don't expect you guys to solve all of Hansel Drive's problems, but I would like a little something. Honestly, I've been there for three years, and I'm, I'm I fed up. I, I, I know you've been coming so. to us for some time. Yeah, since the flood. <laughs> 
So, um, I'm sorry, Heidi here is a new, Bonner. it's he Heidi, uh, sorry, so your last name? The Diaz. Diaz, okay. So there are new owners of Hansel Drive. They've been here for four months. Um, she got a letter in the mail. She's a little nervous because she doesn't know the workings of the township. But she got a letter in the mail saying that she was doing concrete work and fencing on her property and that she is to cease work immediately to you because it's directed to you. Um, but she has not done neither. The house was sold four months ago. The pool concrete fence was there. Was there. Although the fence got blown away in the flood, they rebuilt it, the last prior homeowners. The homeowner before that had a pool and a fence and concrete. So she's a little yeah. under. A little warm. Like, she curious, doesn't know what to do. Like, what exactly is this? You want to see it? No, no. Okay. I, was, I was emailing somebody about My husband, probably. So this all transpired because of the sanitary backup. Um, one of the things that our guys were doing was trying to find out where the backup was, how to get access to it so they could check the line out. Um, I forget your address. 2033. 2033 Hansel. We noticed that there's a mean that goes through their property from the private line going out through that property to the Bucks County Water and Sewer line right there. So there's an easement. Exactly. Thank you. Right. So basically, we found out that there's a fence there. So when the crew, the inspectors came back in, we went on our computers, found out that the fence wasn't there. It was there a couple of years ago, when it was installed without a permit, as well as some concrete work. So I emailed her, her husband had emailed me the night um, after the tax were closed, but I was still here because of the meeting tonight. And I said, well, let me check with the township because I did go back in, check when they bought the properties, go back on our old aerials. The work was done prior to them. Prior to the previous owner. Right, so I don't know what we're gonna do with that, but we up to Mr. Uh, Farrell. Now this work was done, I think from what that I remember, it's pool. like, the pool was there, it's just that there was a patio, the, 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 the concrete was around the pool, but the patio from the pool to the house was all no, within the last five years or six years. The pool has been there. Yeah, the pool's been there. For well, the right. Years. Yeah, they. So I've been or there for ten, the and mm -hmm. that that concrete and pool has been there for ten years. Well, there's no permits on file. Well, in 2019, the the people that when I moved in were there. 2019, they moved out, and a new homeowner bought it, which was Amanda and Jason. They had the pool, never did any work to it in the back. Now she comes along. Yeah, I, if I, I, if so I might, let's, if let's, I might, this is a, this is an active code yeah. citation. Exactly. It's probably not something that we should be debating here. Exactly right. We've heard what what the property owner has to say. Mr. Quint, Mr. Neron said we're looking into it. Mr. Farrell's handling it, but we shouldn't be debating a property okay. citation. I agree here. with you, and that's what I was just ready to bring up. That we have the information. He's here. You got a chance to talk to him directly. He'll resolve the question with you uh, if he hasn't already. Okay. Thank you. Um, how are we handling the blight at Bucks Meadows? That's my question. All right. We have a count. Uh, let me see. I'll hand I'm, it to Joe. I, I can't. Okay. Oh. Mr. Paizo? Paizo? Yes. How are we handling the blight at Bucks Meadows? Uh, tomorrow we'll... Uh, Advise Mr. Uh, Farrell that you you were shown a photograph of I guess trash or debris at, at there, and he'll send an inspector out. So we get the inspector out. Another issue that look I think this is what you were uh, speaking to, Mr. Knowles, possibly was that there was also a water issue at Bucks Meadows a few weeks ago. Did you mention that? That's what they're talking about. That's what they're talking about. Uh, but the prop, the renters at Bucks Meadows were also commenting on this. This yeah. wasn't this. Was social media. This was a social media thing. I'm saying oh, right. that uh, you know they were complaining about the maintenance of the I guess the owners or. Uh, yeah, I just didn't know whether it was a fact because at Bucks it, I mean, social media is not fact sometimes, and they said uh, yeah. It said it said that they had backup of their sewer and the owner of the building or the management of the building said too bad we don't have the money to fix it just put up with it right so i don't know that that's a true um, statement that a true thing that happened and i don't know either but i mean well, it just goes to show yeah. further that we're now seeing 
this just disgusting pile of trash in a community in Ben Salem. Yeah. We're Ben Salem. This should not be happening. It should be addressed immediately. Are they not inspected on a frequency yes, basis? They have, they're on a, the, every two year or every two years uh, the, they get inspected. Could we make it a monthly? It's, it's, I don't know I, that the pipes are probably somebody else's thing. Well, as just, far as no, trash I'm just talking about the general. The, the trash and the trash upkeep, the maintenance of the property. On the outside. Not on the outside. outside. You can do that anytime. There's a well, building. Perhaps, perhaps not. Not everything is visible from the street, and and so you know the 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 property. The code enforcement officers aren't patrolling obscure areas. If we receive a complaint, we will certainly go out and receive it. And so the township's just gotten a complaint about trash and debris on the property. The code officer will go out, but. You know, they see what they see from the roadway, but, you know. The, we the, rely on complaints. No more than you would want them going yeah. into your backyard. Do they go into places where they otherwise don't have uh, immediate uh, free access or, or the, the ability to see? It looked like, it looked to me as if someone had cleared out an apartment and rugs were taken up from the apartment and that type of thing. We could, the next day. Yeah, it, that's what it looked like to me anyway. So. And our code guys are good with that. Once they get a complaint, they go right out and they, they look at that stuff and see what's going on and make them clean it up. Some of the stuff is just so many other, the water to sewer department, this department, that department, when all these departments and getting them all together to get to a solution is the hardest thing in the world to get done. And, and that's going to be, uh, you know, and everybody's talking two weeks. It may take two weeks just to get everybody right. all together to talk about something. Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, but to your point, Mr. Polari, you know, it, it's uh, when, when our code people do learn of things, they do immediately react. And, you know, in, in the case of the lady at 2033 Hansel, you know, regrettably, it was in the course of in investigating something else and trying to figure out why there was sewage backup and smell in her backyard, mm -hmm. them doing their due diligence determined that, hey, there's, there's impervious surface here in the backyard of this house, you know, concrete and fencing that didn't, you know, that there were never any permits for. So we find it, we, we move forward with it. We don't turn a blind eye. If you guys get a meeting together with, um, with Bucks County Water and Sewer, DEP and all that, if there's a meeting, can you please cons have the council president, if he's available, to go there so he can get back to council, the council with what's going on? This way, we're kept on, kept on top of what's happening, and we don't have to keep going after you guys for this stuff. At least, if we have a, right. an idea of what's going on, we can have logical things to say. So we might not get a resolution in two weeks, but we should be able to have a legitimate update at that point. Uh, I'm sure we'll be discussed this Thursday. I know that when everybody's together. <laughs> okay. Well, something we have to work on, something we're aware of, and something we will certainly uh, address. All right, guys, you got it? All right. I want to go to um, other business from supporting personnel as well as council members. Phil Worcester, would you like to add anything this evening? Uh, no more, Mr. President. No more. No moss. Okay. Yeah. Debbie? Was it, uh... Uh, yes, the, the mayor wanted to express his thoughts and prayers to go out to the Monterey Park shooting victims and their families. Tragic incident. Thank you. He also expressed unity. We concluded last Friday at St. Ephraim's, and he said that unique and how Ben Salem is very unique and diversified in faiths. The Parks and Rec is hiring for the youth summer program, and you can obtain an application by calling 215 633 3724 or 215 633 3614. And last but not least, he said that Hertz is back, and so are the Eagles as a Super Bowl threat. Philadelphia will host the NFC Championship game this Sunday, January 29th, against the 49ers at 3 p.m. Go Eagles. I'm glad he brought that up. We didn't know that. He did, yeah. Well, no, he went, well, you know. Let me know. <laughs> and who are they playing? The 49ers. Okay. Debbie knows. You can't ask a square question yeah, and, not, and not expect to get an answer. Yeah, the Flyers even win, right? Here and there. Sort of. Here and there. Okay, uh, Mr. Pazzo, would you like to add anything this evening? Go Birds. Go Birds, okay, very good. And we'll go to our council members. Uh, 
We'll start with uh, Michelle Benitez, please. Unity Week was a great success. Thank you to all who participated and supported us during that. Uh, big shout out to Darren Miller. He's always behind the scenes, but he does so much work with us to um, keep things going here. And I really appreciate what he does. Um, OTN, our OWLS television network, Ben Salem High School students, uh, students that participated from Struble and Ben Salem High School, Box Masculine and Feminaeus Vocalis, Mrs. Ruiz, uh, Ruiz's Choir Kids, um, thank you for joining us and your sharing your gift of song. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to my dad because he's going to turn 60 on February 1st. So happy birthday to my dad. Happy 60th. Um, and then go Eagles. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Sounds great. Vice President Joe Polari. It's all been said. Thank you, okay. Mr. President. Secretary Joe Knowles. Yes. I would just to reiterate that uh, you know the, we did have Unity Week last week and it was a great uh, occasion. I did mention at the last council meeting that yesterday was the Chinese New Year. Uh, it's the Lunar New Year and several Asian communities celebrate it. Uh, and uh, uh, just our prayers uh, for the people in Monterey. Uh, unfortunately, another uh, shooting. You. Keep your prayers for those people. Uh, and, you know, we have a problem with uh, this happening in our country, uh, mental illness and, and also uh, the access to these kind of uh, assault-type uh, guns. That's it. Thanks. Gung Hei Fai Choi. Okay, thank you. Stacy Champion, please. Councilwoman. Um, Unity Week was amazing. Prosperity All the wall. kids were great from uh, Struble. The high school and St. Ephraim's was fantastic, meeting so many different people from the township um, during the week um, at the events I went to. Thank you to everybody, to Toby and all of her group that do this. Thanks to Parks for kicking it off with the breakfast, to uh, Love uh, Fellowship Tabernacle on Sunday night, and to uh, St. Ephraim's on Friday. And um, I think I said go Eagles, and happy birthday to your dad. Happy birthday. And I'll conclude by... Uh reiterating everything that everyone had said this evening, uh, especially with Unity Week, it was, uh, was as remarkable as it always is. And uh, February 2nd is Groundhog Day. So we know that. So our, our best wishes go to Bill Murray and how he's uh, made that such an important day in our lives. Groundhog Day, February 2nd. Got that, Joseph? Yep. Okay, that's it. The meeting is concluded. Uh -huh.